Okay, it is Thursday, June 22nd, 2017. This is the Situate Planning Board meeting. We have a posted agenda. Do we have a second? Yes, we do. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, first up, public hearing, accessory dwelling permit, special permit, uh, 33 Barker Road. And um, seeing as this is a special permit, uh, you'll need four out of four here tonight uh, because Mr. Bornstein won't be joining us tonight. Okay. okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Gregory Morse. I'm a registered engineer from Morse Engineering, uh, representing Ann Corbo, the applicant, and her mother, Kathleen Corbo, who's the property owner. This is a request for an accessory dwelling permit in accordance with section 830.2 <coughs> of the bylaw. Um, the Corbos both reside at this property right now. The property is at the corner of Hillcrest Road and Barker Road. Um, the main objective here is to construct the accessory dwelling and move um, the mother, Kathleen Corbo, into that accessory dwelling. Um, the house as it sits today is a five bedroom house. We would be changing the house into a four bedroom house and then placing that additional fifth bedroom, moving that over into the accessory area. Uh, the addition that we've laid out is 748 square feet in size. The bylaw allows up to a maximum of 750 square feet. Um, so we demonstrate compliance with that. The existing house itself is non-conforming with respect to zoning, with respect to the side yard and the rear yard setbacks, also with respect to the lot area. This went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and received unanimous approval um, the last, last week of that board. Um, because with this addition, we're increasing the floor area more than 20% of the gross floor area. Um, no one in the audience spoke up in objection to this project at the time. As part of the special permit, we reviewed the parking. Um, you're required to have two parking spaces for the house and two parking spaces for the accessory dwelling. Um, the layout that you see on the plan there is the existing driveway. Um, again, we're not adding any bedrooms. We're not adding any new people to this property. That's where they park. Um, there is room there for four cars. Um, albeit the existing driveway uses a portion of the right-of-way. That's how it's existed since this house um, has been occupied by the Corbos. I'd turn it over for any questions or comments. I did bring copies of the architectural plans as well. I think you have copies of those. Uh, I can go through those if you'd like. Um, <coughs> there were just a couple of things that came up in connection with this. One was from the health agent, the health uh, director, that there isn't any documentation for the septic system at the Board of Health, and there's a concern that they don't know what kind of system it has, how big it is, they are adding a bedroom, um, they don't have enough information to know is it four bedroom now, is it five bedroom now, so that's one of the things that um, that I think needs to be figured out. Um, the only other um, thing that's a little bit of an issue is the parking seems a little on the tight side. You know, you've got, um, I believe it's, um, you know, two cars uh, stacked, which if you ever had someone else living there that wasn't a family member, it would be a little bit tight. You might want to get um, another space shown on the plan um, somewhere, um, you know, and the whole, the whole property is actually a little bit on the tight side for this. Um, you're right up against the eight foot setback, um, on one side and the other side, it's like a two foot setback. So it's tight, but it looks like it'll look good as far as the architecture and, you know, maybe we can all live with those other issues. Except I think that the septic system has to be resolved. And what do we know about the city? So we have no additional information on the septic system? She didn't have any information. Um, some of the files down there are not easy to find, and I'm assuming that's what happened with this one. 
if I may, I met uh, the applicant and myself, we met with Jennifer Keefe, the Board of Health agent, and discussed this project in specifics, because um, that was one of our questions going in here. This house is serviced right now by a cesspool. The cesspool is located on the east side of the house on Barker Road. Um, the Title V requirements and the Situate Board of Health requirements in a scenario like this are that you perform an inspection to verify the structural integrity of the system and to verify that the proposed addition would meet the setbacks to it. Um, there's a 20-foot setback from a cesspool to a foundation. I haven't submitted a report to the Board of Health yet, but this certainly will meet passing Title V requirements for that. Uh, this is not what's referred to as new construction in Title V either. We're not adding any bedrooms to the house. We're removing a bedroom from the existing house. We're adding the bedroom in the accessory dwelling. So it's a net of zero. Um, again, it only triggers a, an inspection to identify the location of the cesspool and to verify that we comply with the setbacks to it, which we do. So you don't have to have the cesspool tested at all? It's not required to dimensional. It's only required to pass the setback from the foundation to the cesspool. It's not required to pass a full Title V inspection, which it may or may not. There is sewer available on Barker Road. They could potentially tie into that at that point. I think that's one of the things that we're looking at is, are, is the infrastructure adequate to incorporate an accessory dwelling? So the answer we have is we don't really know? The answer you have is yes, it is adequate. And the reason I say that is because Title V flows for an accessory dwelling or for a house are based off of the number of bedrooms. Without a number of bedrooms increasing, you're not adding any flow to the septic system. This services five bedrooms right now. It'll service five bedrooms when the project is complete. So by definition, it passes? Correct. And then the question on that, like right on the plans where you have on the primary dwelling, the home office, that used to be a bedroom, and so you're removing the casing? Removing the doors um, to that so that you eliminate the privacy. Where Correct. is that? <coughs> Widening on the second floor. So the you're removing the door here. This used to be the bedroom. Is that room where the door is taken out? Yeah, you take, you take the door out and you widen the entrance to 60 inches to eliminate the privacy. Correct. Um, I have a question. Yes, yeah. All right, I see in the accessory apartment that there's a six-foot slider. Where is the other access egress? Sure. Right now, the access and egress to the primary dwelling is on the front of the property. The second one is going to be right here at the front as well. Uh, the first floor plan. Did you pass it? Did you know? Shows the, the front deck and the porch with the access into the existing house. There's access there as well into the accessory dwelling. All right, so this, a this access into the dining room is that what I'm right saying? Right here and right here. Into the sitting area. One, into the sitting area into the and into the kitchen. Okay. Where the door opens up, it says cubbies. Then there's a stairway, a sitting area. Closet. And then you have the door going into the dining in the main house. At least that's... No, that, <clears throat> that's, no a, that's, a, that's a closet. A slider, that's right? a closet from the main house. This. This blue line here represents the, the party wall or the partition wall. All right, There's I, no uh, connection between the two units. They are individual units. All right, so then if that's the case, uh, then I'm confused. Because I see the slider going into the kitchen area. And then that DN with the arrow going to the covered porch. Yeah, you're that, stepping down onto the porch. You're stepping down onto the porch. And then if you bang a left, mm -hmm. you've got um, down and down with a door. It appears to be a door that's going into the dining room. Of the main house. Of the main house. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's <coughs> it's the main house entrance. All right. 
And then there's another entrance, the porch goes into the living room, or how does that work? This, this goes straight into the dining room. Right, I see that. For the main dwelling. Yes. There's another access off of Barker Road with a door into the, the porch on Barker Road. Which enters into the living room? There's no doorway. I think there's no door. missing a door there. Yeah, you're missing a door. Yeah, I, I'll bring that up to the architect. There's, there's access from that porch into, into the dwelling. Okay. Yes. All right. Yep. Thanks. And, and the access from the slider onto the deck, how you, is there access off the deck? There is as a step off of the deck. So, oh, this is a low. This is like a ground level then, the deck. That we're looking at here. Front. So the front elevations here. You see the slider here. This is the accessory. In fact, from my pen to the right is primarily the existing house. My pen to the left being the accessory. Uh, there's the slider with a, with a deck in front of it. Um, you know, it's it's a foot 18 inches off grade. It's a relatively flat site. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Since brought, uh, Ann brought it up, what are the regulations today? The two uh, egress points have to be a certain distance apart. I'm, I'm not familiar with what the what that is. I know that you're required to have two. I do know that. Okay. You know, and everything down in that neck of the woods is pretty tight to begin with. Everybody's sort of, it, it's a beachy type of area. So, you know, it's the setbacks are the setbacks. Yeah. I don't really have a problem with this. <clears throat> Another question, just a clarification. On the plan that I'm looking at, you've got a dotted line that says building envelope. Yes. What exactly is that? Um, sure. So the building envelope represents these zoning setbacks. It would be a 30-foot setback from the front and 8-foot okay. setback from the sides and then 20 from that interior okay. corner. So that's why it's saying, yeah, it's it's 8-foot 4. <clears throat> oh, and it's okay. Okay, now eight I get foot's it. required. We're proposing it at 8-foot 4. 4, okay. Right. Got it. Got it. Yes, septic system is to the east of the building? The yes. Building. It's located down. Yeah. Approximately uh, right here. Down below the dimension, yeah. Mm -hmm. So does the accessory dwelling have a separate feed into the septic system? The plumbing would tie into the, the plumbing in the primary house in the foundation or in the basement area and go out to the cesspool. What about water? Water would be tied in inside the... Is a separate unit. water meter for it? You'd... If the water department requires it, you'd do a submeter. It's not a separate tap out into the street, no. Has the water department already looked at this? Um, the DPW gets copies of them. We don't usually have a separate copy for the water department, but well, it, it's kind of an ongoing um, situation that they should know about. I mean, I think at one point they were trying to get everyone to put in a separate water meter, but that just um, wasn't practical, and it's also expensive for the homeowner. It's five thousand dollars. Sixty-five hundred. Oh my goodness, wow. it went up. Yeah. Huh. We have and to go up because the water that's going through it went up. <laughs> and is the. Uh, can't really tell from the uh, elevation views here, but is is all the finish on the new stuff the same as the old stuff? Is, are there differences here? It's, they're they're going to try to match the finishes. Is the goal right? right. What's on there right now is a um, a vinyl clapboard. I'm going to try to match that. But if I remember right, the parking is loosely defined in the curve. Loosely defined, yeah. I mean, it's a gravel driveway that exists right now. Um, it, it Hillcrest Road, that location is a gravel street as well. So, is there room for additional parking space there? You could you could widen that driveway and certainly put additional parking in. Um, 
the number of occupants that are there today is the same number of occupants that will be there in this scenario. It's the, the mother, daughter, and the children. Yeah, I understand that, except that you know, if they sell the house or something, anything sure. can happen, right? So I guess the only thing I wouldn't want to do is somehow codify the fact that your parking spaces are running into the town right away or whatever. Sure. So I think I'd be more comfortable if they could find uh, at least another parking space here. So would I. You could push that back, though, couldn't you? Couldn't you push the, the parking back? I think they've got it, it seems like there's room. Most likely you'd be looking at widening the driveway is what you would do, and we could certainly accommodate that. If Greg were just to show it on a plan, then you know, you'd have it, you'd know that it could be done if the scenario ever changed. Well, I think I'd like to see it on the plan because I don't, I don't want to convey the notion in the special permit that this is somehow a taking of the easement or we're agreeing that you know if, if the town were to come and try to use this space and they ended up with two parking spaces we don't want people parking on the street right yeah is there a curb there is there a curb cut or is this just no it's no. a gravel no it's gravel so you could easily widen it you wouldn't have to do a curb cut or anything you could it's all lawn along the front of this house so I mean you could just remove some of that um, okay um, other questions <clears throat> no. Bill, the only thing I would say is that we have um, agreement from the Board of Health but otherwise it all looks pretty good except for the parking if you wanted to show that on the plan I, I'd <clears throat> would agree to that I'd like to see the parking on the, on the plan yep I'd also like to make sure we affirmatively state that this is a four bedroom house and the, the home office doesn't become another bedroom you know six months later sure so in my discussions with the Board of Health we talked about placing a deed restriction on the property so that would be recorded yeah but we'll put it in the special permit that if it were to change we can revoke the special permit too sure it would be a change <coughs> and the um, the board of health you talked to the board of health about the septic system yes i have and where where do they stand on it they want me to submit a sketch of what's out there for the system with dimensions and show that we comply with the 20-foot setback which i will certify that we do comply with those setbacks I just haven't turned that document in yet and I think I asked this before but I'll if you could humor me again the difference between a cesspool and a septic is what sure so a cesspool this house is at an old house I believe it was constructed in 1895 um, back then it was common to have a cesspool which is essentially a a pit and it's a it's a porous pit typically they're made out of field stone or concrete block all of the wastewater of this house including all of the solids go out to that pit it it services both to trap that it also services in a as limited a capacity as so leaching. it doesn't really have a leaching field like a Correct. typical septic system it doesn't like have it. a separate leaching system okay and, and did they consider connecting to town sewer? That, that was brought into consideration. Um, financially, the goal right now is to get the accessory dwelling constructed. The septic is serving the capacity at the house right now. Um, eventually, down the road, uh, most likely this property will be tied into town sewer. It comes at great expense, though. It's another $20,000. But we really don't know the performance of the Maybe assessment. Maybe more if it's running the streets. Mm -hmm. All we know is it's not running above ground. It's going to pass Title V's requirements for what we're proposing. We know that. In terms of performance? I mean, if this is new construction, you'd never be able to do that. This right? is not considered new construction. No, that's yes, what I'm saying. correct. If this was I'm new construction. It may not actually be performing very yeah. well as a yeah. septic system. Correct. All right. Um, Questions from the public? Yeah, it's thank you, sir. No Any problem. questions from the public on this? 
seems like we have quite a crowd, but it must not be for this. <laughs> okay. Do you have a motion? Does she have, have a motion? I'll read it. I move to make the following um, findings of fact. On May 4th, 2017, Anne and Kathleen Corbeau applied for a special permit for an accessory dwelling proposed to be attached to a single family home at 33 Barker Road. Two, based on the application, the interior floor space of the proposed accessory dwelling will be 748 square feet. This is less than the maximum of the 750 square feet allowed by the zoning bylaw. The accessory dwelling meets the size requirements of section 530.2F. Three, the side setback of the existing house is less than five feet and is non-conforming. A special permit to allow expansion was approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals on June 15, 2017. Four, according to the Town of Situate Assessor's Field Card, the existing house has a net area of 1,718 square feet and five bedrooms. The proposed accessory dwelling plan dated 3-31-17 shows four outside parking spaces. Two spaces are across the property line but appear to be off the street. This appears adequate to provide two parking spaces for the accessory dwelling and sufficient parking for the primary dwelling. The owner has submitted a signed notarized statement that she will live on the property. The primary dwelling and the accessory dwelling will be serviced by <coughs> A septic system. Should we say cesspool as opposed to? It, well, it's a septic system. You can. I think you can maybe just leave that out. All right. All right. Um, the accessory dwelling will have one bedroom, and the primary dwelling will have four bedrooms. The adequacy of the septic system for the number of bedrooms must be determined by the Board of Health. Seven. There are two means of egress: a door to the deck and a slider to the outside. Eight, the application meets the standards of the zoning bylaw for an accessory dwelling special permit. So, so maybe you want only reward. one question on that was the parking. <coughs> yeah, maybe I wrote that before you just had the discussion that you had. Maybe you want to just pitch that maybe one. Change the statement of finding a fact on the parking. Yeah, maybe you don't want to have a finding of fact about parking. What did we, can you repeat what we said there? Yeah. Um, okay. Two spaces are across the property line but appear to be off the street. This appears adequate to provide two parking spaces for the accessory dwelling and sufficient parking for the primary dwelling. So I think we should say with the. Again, something to the effect of an expansion <coughs> area. Yeah, there's an expansion area to allow for two additional parking spaces. Would you not put that um, in the... Discussion? Well, I just don't want to, I don't want to codify the notion that those two that go into the right. town right of way are... Allowable. Yeah, we're, we're, we're saying there may be some grandfathering that's happening there, but if the town comes along and says we're putting something there, um, they're going to lose those parking spaces. Okay. Right. So how do you want to reword this? Uh, well, do we have it um, in the um, the actual motion? Yes. So we could we could say that there was two spaces available. Just leave it at that. I would sit there and say that there are four spaces currently being provided that serving the house, two of which are in, in the town right away. Then you can come back up and yeah, correct that. Okay. We can correct that in the decision. Mm -hmm. In the decision. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that makes sense. All right. Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay. With that modification. Do we have to have a motion on the findings of fact? Move the findings of fact is modified. Or as presented. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I move to approve the special permit for an accessory dwelling at 33 Barker 
Road with the following conditions in addition to the standard conditions for the accessory dwellings approved by the Planning Board after public hearing on 12-17-15. Except for any changes necessary to meet these conditions, any construction shall conform to the plans entitled Proposed Accessory Dwelling Plan, 33 Barker Road, Situate Mass, by Morris Engineering, dated 331-16, revised 5-217, and elevations and floor plans including drawings A1.1 proposed first floor plan proposed second floor plan proposed elevation south elevation and east elevation by HC design and dated 25 August 2016 March 10 2017 and April 25th 2017 the number of bedrooms in the accessory dwelling is limited to one in the location and size indicated on the floor plan submitted with the application. The number of bedrooms in the primary dwelling is limited to four. The special permit shall be revoked if the number of bedrooms is increased without prior approval of the planning board. The accessory dwelling shall conform to all applicable standards in the building, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, fire, and health codes and bylaws. An inspection will be required to verify the structural integrity of the septic system and any additional information will be provided to demonstrate the number of bedrooms. Five, that was number four. Five, the standard conditions for accessory dwellings approved by the planning board shall be, con shall be conditions of this decision and shall be included for recording at the registry of deeds. Six, parking to serve both units shall be shown in on the lot rather than partly within Hillcrest Road. The change shall be made prior to the filing of the motion. Special permit or decision or something? Uh, like prior to the decision with the town clerk. That means like prior right. to the filing of the decision. Okay. Okay. I think we've got to change one thing. All right. That is on the first floor elevation. We have to identify that those drawings are going to be modified to give you a separate exit. Okay. All right. So. I'm sorry, they'll be modified for what? You can give it a second exit. To the main house. To right. the main house. Oh, oh. It will be updated to show the existing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. What we're doing is we're, we're going to put the missing door back. <laughs> and if we're really good, we'll take the one that we took off upstairs to the exercise room and put it downstairs. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Do we have motions modified? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, and also, this, um, we need to change this from 20 Deer Common Drive to 33 Black. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you, um, Okay. Moving rapidly along. Moving right along. Uh, We're only 15 minutes late. We're hardly into our agenda. Um, middle school identification sign. I assume that's why the group is here. I know. It's amazing. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it's as big as a car. But I mean, you've got this and then you've got this. Yeah, I'm not boss. Okay, um, can you identify yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm Shane Nolan with Daedalus Projects. We're the uh, owner's project manager for the new middle school. John McCarthy, superintendent of schools. John Richardson, Gordon and Architects. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, so um, we appreciate the opportunity to come back again. We were, we were here with you guys two weeks ago. We, uh, we presented a uh, proposed site sign for the, the new middle school. Um, you guys had some comments. We, we took those on board. We went back to our school building committee 
Um, the School Building Committee is a, is a 15 person committee that was appointed to, uh, to oversee the construction of the, uh, the new middle school that's been in place for, for about four years now. Um, we went back to them with your comments. We looked at some, some of the, the, the other options and some of the signs. We, we've been talking about this sign with our committee since February. It had come up over the last couple of months before we presented to you. And um, we, 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 we tried to look at ways where we could address your, your, your comments and concerns from the, 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 last, uh, the last planning board meeting. So what, what we presented tonight is what we came up with at, at our meeting. Um, the committee voted to, uh, to come back and present this to you. They, they voted unanimously. Uh, on this sign is their preferred Can I option. For a second, did you get the input from the design review committee? We did. Yeah, we got that letter from uh, Hal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what we're here to present tonight. This is the uh, the the, the um, sign that was approved by our building committee, and which we would like to present to you tonight. Well, pass it over to John. Right. And, and so, uh, um, in processing that that feedback. Uh, the design and the committee have made uh, several changes. One, they've relocated the sign from its initial proposed location to be in the traffic island. Uh, two, we've reduced the size of the sign uh, to, to approximately two-thirds. It's gone from 15 feet wide to 12 feet wide, and it's uh, three foot four uh, tall uh, for the masonry portion. Um, but it is still essentially the same design in that it uses the materials from the building, the uh, painted metal panel, and the same brick, uh, and also a, a painted uh, metal pole. Uh, we did look at four other options with the building committee that were different designs based on the feedback uh, that we had gotten from the design review committee. But as Shane said, and ultimately after discussion, the committee voted unanimously to, to stay with this design. They felt it fit best with the building. Did you, um, in that discussion, did you address the design review committee's input? We did discuss that, and uh, we looked at, like I say, very different styles of sign. I guess that's not what I was getting at. Oh. I think if, if I remember their letter, they were suggesting that we ought to be looking at this kind of holistically with the high school and have, have consistent signage across both locations to make it look like a true school campus as opposed to one new building and the appendage behind it we discussed that comment too i'm sorry i misunderstood um the uh but the the project we have is a middle school project we don't have authority or funds for redoing the high school sign okay or you have any questions um no i just had a couple um, really brief comments. I think um, one of the things that has happened is that the sign is being proposed right now is smaller. And I think with the, the big building and the big high school building, that having something a little bit smaller is going to maybe make a little more of a human scale over there, which I would imagine would be something that kids would respond to. Um, and otherwise, I think you know that the new location is seems like a better one um, but you know it's it's a design situation and you know okay thanks everyone's gonna have different taste hmm. <laughs> okay <sighs> well you all know how I feel about this sign and you all know that I feel that it's unnecessary but if this is what you want then I guess this is what we have to deal with However, if this is what the road you're going to take, I would lose the pole. I would take that pole down. I would just have it go. You need the anchor. Let the pole go. I, I just don't think that it's necessary. It serves no earthly purpose unless you want to put a flag on the top of it. it it's just an appendage. And I know that it's there to um, basically anchor this and I think Richard had pointed out at the last meeting that the pier that this goes into does it really have to be that long but you know if you can lose the pole then I'll support this That's, I, I do think that it's overkill I don't think that it's necessary I think that it's beautifully written across the top of the school itself 
but if this is what you all want and 15 people said that this is what they want then how who am I to argue with them well yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understand you presented your arguments why and how you came to the design that you have. Yeah, my take on it is somewhat similar to Ann's. I'm not sure that you really need to sign, but I can see putting up the new building that's worthy of a new sign. So to the extent that's the sign you want, you looked at our comments from design review, I'll support your change, your, cha your consistent sign. What about the poll? I just have a qualification. I've got the previous presentation here where you had marked out that it was going to be in the circle with D. So I just wanted to be 100% sure. Where are you proposing it now based on the previous handout that you gave us? Yeah, it's, it's in that teardrop turnaround. So isn't that where you had proposed it before? Well, pre previously, before the last meeting, after the uh, design review, it was somewhere else. It's in the teardrop. I think that's what's in that. Well, you so kind of—it's like it a before? big. It was, it was down here at the turn at the turn off the road behind the town hall. <coughs> oh, really? Yeah. It was oh. originally it was proposed to be there. So, but when we saw it last time at the planning board, it had already moved to the traffic circle. That is correct. It, 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 so that, that is moved. that has not changed. No. So the main thing that's changed is the size is smaller 25 percent smaller or would you what was the the number it's two-thirds the size. we're from 15 to 12. 15, three feet small okay well um i guess i have a similar comment in the sense of i know the poll is supposed to be um referencing something nautical to me it doesn't seem very nautical i don't know maybe i'm just being stupid but um if it was going to be nautical, I feel like it should really go forth and be, be a mast or something. Because um, I know this is sort of symbolic, but it just I agree with Anne completely. It just looks like a pole, an appendage. If I'm driving up to it, I wouldn't immediately get the fact that it's supposed to be some nautical reference, that it's a sailboat or a mast of a sail. Um, so that's one aspect. And the pier itself that it goes into, you didn't decrease the size of that pier at all, right? It's about two courses lower. Because the whole sign was shrunk. But it's just as wide, the pier. It's just as wide as it was. No, I, I scaled everything uniformly. So. With masonry coursing, so it's not. And is the. <coughs> the when you say the pier, I'm. Mean, I'm sorry, the brick, the, br the brick pier. Oh. I, we were saying, I had proposed just having or, or making that half the size and just putting another brick pier on the other side, making it real simple. We reviewed that. We that was one of the four other options we reviewed with the uh, building committee. And the metal that it's the that the background where it says Lester J Gates Middle School is that the same metal as the cornice of the um, the middle school? Yeah, it's the same metal you can see right now out the window. Okay, it's the it's the cornice in the upper story. Is the is the angle of the slice? the same as the angle of the cornice? I do not think that it is. I, I, I certainly didn't. I guess what I, okay, maybe my question should be, are you trying to reference the two? Are you trying to tie that together? Because this is my, my big problem with this sign is I feel like it doesn't tie into the architecture of the school very well, and it doesn't tie into the nautical feeling of Situate very well, in my opinion. Yeah, I can't argue with your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I guess if, like you said. That was the objective? This was supposed to be a nautical thing? That's what this is representing? It was supposed to reflect the school and, and use the materials of the school. There is a, a secondary reading that is an abstract boat, just like the tall stair tower is an abstract lighthouse. Uh, uh -huh. But that's meant to be abstract, not literal. Uh, we, a year ago, we looked at a picture with an actual boat on it. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't like that. So I'm just reading over the, the DRC comments right now. Um, so I guess potentially if we take their comments at, at, if there ever was a new high school sign, it could also be a replicated exactly, and that would be the consistency as potential. 
we have begun the process of painting the metal panels in the high school to match the gray of the middle school. Well, um, I guess I feel similar to Bill and Ann is the fact that I still don't like it, but if, if how many members are on the school? The, the Fif Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. If fifteen members won it, I feel like I'm going against the stream here. Um, could so you, could you, excuse me, Richard, could you lose the poll? Could we just dispense with the poll? I mean, all of the design could be changed. We did review this, and that poll in particular was discussed with the committee, so I don't, I don't quite know how to answer that. Well, we started looking at it in February. Um, it's been reviewed by the building committee at least three times, probably four times now with the last review. The, we've looked at various um, versions of this with a pole, without a pole. So it, it came and it went. We looked at it with, went out, it was higher, it was lower, with a variety of different looks. And at the end of the day, um, and we do have architects, I don't know if any of them are here tonight, besides our architect, we do have <laughs> architects on the building committee from the town. So, um, and, they, and they were strongly in favor of keeping the poll. Um, because it was asymmetric and they felt it balanced. So, so, so as we discussed this again, went back and forth, do we do two peers? one pier, different smaller pier, same size pier. The pole ended up staying. How tall is the pole? It is now nine feet tall. It was taller at one time. It was taller. And I can just see some seventh graders <laughs> shimmying up that pole. Um, They're gonna grease. Yeah, seriously. Um, I can support the sign, but I cannot support the poll. It's, it's just very simple. I can't support that poll. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, well, you know how I feel. Mm -hmm. Let's, um, <coughs> we have people who want to make comments, public comments here. Anybody? <laughs> yes. My name is Stuart Kelly. I live at 56 Moreland Road, and I am a member of the committee. Our concern is that, um, Shane has reminded us as we discuss this through the months that we're out of time. That the, uh, uh, the people that are building the middle school are going to start breaking down and leaving and we're going to lose metal workers, masons, landscapers, and we're going to be opening a middle school without a sign. So that's our <coughs> concern. We want to have a quality product. Um, I don't know mass sales um, or the brick foundation for it. I defer to the architects that are far more expert than I am. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Um, Robin Laverne, um, the chair of the school building committee. And um, we have looked at the sign multiple times and then at our last meeting went through different options. Um, the one that people liked the absolute least was two piers with a metal sign in the middle. Um, there was discussion of another one that had kind of one pier and brick and kind of a sign laying on top of that. Um, but between the architect that's on the committee, the principal, um, and a few other members, they they all agreed that that this was the sign. And your committee was focused just on the middle school? We were the entire building project, so the Performing Arts Center, the renovated arts wing, and the middle but school. But just project. on this project? Correct. Right. So and nobody's looked at the campus as a whole? Hmm? Nobody's looked at the campus as a whole, which is now what you've created? In what way? Well, for signage. For signage, yes. Right. We, 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 have, we, have, we have for directional <laughs> signage, there is, but not no, I mean for names. We haven't looked at the new high school identifications. The site signage around is all being changed. Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at F here, has the, the athletic fields, performing arts, gymnasium, visitors, no, you know, all I, these I, signs I actually we kind of like. In, this, this is my opinion, but I think the design review committee has a very good point is that we've changed the entire nature of this campus. We created a campus 
and that if we're going to identify individual facilities, we ought to make it look like a campus from the signage point of view. And the directional signs are fine, but there's also the individual signs for the individual schools. And I think they have, a, my view is they have a very good point here is that, and I realize everybody's objective here is to get this project done. But the problem is that this project changed the whole nature of what this place looks like. And, and I believe it would probably be in your purview to look at the entire setup and say, can we get the school signage to match each other as well or to complement each other? And I think that's what the design review committee was getting at. Um, and I hear the, I hear the, the uh, notion being that, well, that wasn't our job, but it's got to be somebody's job. And, we're the planning board, so we're trying to look at it a little more holistic level. And that's what I would ask is, is there a way to, to make the, sign, the signage up across the entire school campus? Because this is now a school campus. This is not the middle school. Um, even though the middle school sort of dwarfs the high school. Um, so I guess that's my question. Is there a way? to make this can, consistent. Can. And I realize you're working on your little project, right? Uh, and big project in that regard. But this is a broader issue. So, so, so as John said, this is, this is a middle school sign where we, 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 we signed an agreement with the, the Mass School Building Authority, who are our partner in this, and they're, they're funding part of this project to the, the tune of about $21 million. Um, this, this would likely be reimbursable by the MSBA as part of the middle school project. If we do it as part of the high school project, it would not be reimbursable. Um, this sign we had priced by the contractor is about $40,000. So I think to, to, to add another one is another $40,000 at least. So, so that would have to go back to the, the building. How much did we more. spend on the middle school? It's uh, 55, 55 million. 55 million. Yeah. And we spent 30 some odd million renovating the high school, right? Seems to me there's there ought to be an opportunity to get the signage to well, complement well, each well, other. My point being is that, that that's not a decision any of us can make either tonight. We well, have I'm to go back to, to our, our, our committee. Well, I think even he doesn't have the, the authority. Yeah. To right. Do I, I mean, we don't, we don't necessarily disagree. That's what you would want. Well, yeah, we don't disagree with anybody's point about the campus. And quite frankly, when the conversation about the sign first came up, um, we immediately dismissed matching the current high school sign. Nobody, nobody liked that. Um, so I would, I would be on board right. with that. <laughs> so, um, so we have agreement there. Um, however, as Shane has said, you know, this sign we're going to get MSBA likely to pay for, you know, forty something percent of the cost perhaps this maybe won't be that high but they'll pay for some of it whereas if we do a new high school sign to match this one and we're going to be in the range of you know paying all ourselves whatever that cost ends up being plus we haven't we haven't priced it this sign has been designed then shrunk priced um i don't know if the price is shrunk the new yeah the new one hasn't been priced that was the older one um, so, it, you know, do, we don't disagree with the fact that the science should match and that it's a campus. We totally, 100% agree with that. The question is, can we do it within the, you know, the project? And, you know, is it, is it worth, worth it to the town? Because that's ultimately, it's going to fall on the town that, you know, we're paying, you know, thirty-five to $40,000 for a sign that we're not going to get no reimbursement for. It's a, it's, a, it's a legitimate question. I mean, Shane has to go through all the changes on the project and separate those related to the high school uh, auditorium, which are not reimbursable uh, from the middle school ones, which potentially are. I get all that, yeah. right? I, I'm, I'm not arguing about the dollars and cents of one thing versus the other. It just seems to me that becomes the excuse to say, okay, we'll deal with the middle school and forget about the high school and forget about trying to tie these two things together. I would love to way. tie them together, but again, it's... I, I know I it's not your door. job, but it's some, it should be somebody's could, job. Could, could we have that as a condition, though, in the sense of saying, let's say, let's theoretically, we approve the sign and we say, on the condition that if there, and I say if, there ever was a high school sign, it has to match. Like, we put that in there, like in the sense of not, not forcing them to do that, but just saying. I would like to know that somebody's working on it. 
Yeah. I guess that would be my question. Mm. Is somebody going to work on it? Yeah, so somebody has to come up with capital to do it. I understand that, right? And, you know, we don't want to lose the opportunity to help pay for half of it, right? But to me, all we're talking about is half of it. The other half is the high school. And, and in fact, you know, is there some other sign that needs to happen, like right up at the entrance, that talks about the high school, middle school campus or something like that? I don't know. But it seems to me, and I, I tend to agree with the Design Review Committee, this is an opportunity to really look at that. And, um, you know, what you, what you essentially do by approving this particular sign is you say that the high school sign has to somehow, you know, have some some connection doesn't have to be exactly the same but it has to have some connection if you ultimately build a new high school sign right so that it feels like you've knitted both places together but we certainly have from a facilities point of view mm -hmm. yeah i would suggest it be something about being compatible because you wouldn't want to match the exact sign no i'm not suggesting right. that I'm, I'm suggesting that compatible is a good word mm -hmm. i think one of the things that the design review stated was the possibility of putting off putting up this sign until such time as everything yeah. could be put together. And I just have to say as a taxpayer, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think $40,000 for a sign like this is beyond the pale. I really have a real problem because $40,000 represents the, a starting school teacher. I really have a problem with this. I really do. I, I think I think that it's even before I knew the price of this, I felt the sign was overkill. But that's just how I feel. Where, what's your, where's the majority of the money in this thing? Yeah, really. Um, we have a breakdown, well, but the there's structure structure break deal, there's foundations, there's break. I mean, none of that is designed here. I just want to be clear. That is that is a price from the contractors. Yeah. Um, and we have no stake in, I, I agree, it's very expensive. Oh. But the whole school is very expensive. That's the nature of public construction. That's why it's $55 million. But this sign is going to be forever be a one of because it's not going to match up to high school. Right. Unless you put a lighthouse over there. <laughs> and I say within 10 years that high school is coming down. I'll have to wait and see. But it is. So this, looking at the DRC and what they suggested, is that even possible? It says if funds have to be spent by a certain date, could they go into an escrow account earmarked for some kind of design competition to create a unified system? Could that, is no, that even possible? Yeah. The, the, the project is audited monthly by, by MSBA, and then it, it, it takes a bit of time to close it out. But, but we're, we're, what we do with the funds is dictated by MSBA as well. We, we have a, a funding agreement with them. I, I, I've never done it before. We, we can ask the question, but I don't think we could. Not from, not from, from that side. Yeah. Which yeah. You, what you're telling us is that if I kiss the sign goodbye, I don't save $20 million. $20,000. Well, we, 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 with MSBA reimbursement, we, we have to submit all our costs and tell them at some point this is the final cost. And, and we obviously want to do that so, so the town can get all the reimbursement back. And if, if this dragged out with the design competition, it would just take so much longer to do that. And, and MSBA wouldn't be able to close the project, we wouldn't be able to get our final funding. So, could, could it be done? Did you ask them about escrowing money or something I, like that? I, I, I certainly can. I've never heard of it done before. Yeah, um, generally, they are extremely discouraging of changes in general and, and, and what they call third party changes, um, changes requested by any town entity, uh, be fire, building inspector, uh, which often happens on projects, and those are all excluded. It, when they look at the state overall, they want to make sure that towns do the project they promised at the start of the project funding agreement and not expand the scope. And they're very rigid about that. We haven't suggested to expand the scope. Right? It's not what we're suggesting. I think well, the MSBA would see a high school, school sign as yeah. an expansion of the scope. Excuse me? I'm not suggesting that the MSBA would pay for the high school sign. I think what the Design Review Committee had suggested is can you escrow the money for the middle school sign and then do a consistent design across both <coughs> campuses? I mean, I, I, the answer to that would be I, I just wouldn't close the project down. Escrow doesn't, there's no advantage to doing that. The project can't close until we're finished spending all the money. 
from the project. So whether that's six months after, 12 months, or 18 months after. How long is it usually? Usually takes about 12 months. 12 months. So we couldn't get this sort of designed and, and built in um, 12 months? Well, we, 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 we could. Again, some of the concern is the school is scheduled to be finished the end of July. There's six or seven different <coughs> subcontractors involved in this sign. If we have to go design another one, price that. There's a there's a submittal process then that, that the, uh, the subcontractors have to go through with the architect. So so it is a drawn out process and, and getting the subcontractors back after they demobilized makes it that much more expensive and, and hard to do. So the price would go up, most likely. Is this sign lighted? There, there is. Uh, I'm hoping there is the possibility it. to light it. Uh, inter a possibility or internally? Internally. Uh uh. Mm -hmm. Not allowed under our bylaws. There can uh. be no internally lit signs outside. You would have to have it have uh. a light on it. You can do up light. Up light it. You we can't can do that. Well, hold, it, hold it a second. I, I thought you already had this priced out. So right. yeah. it either does or doesn't have a light. When, when we had it priced, it was, it was in a different location, so there was no power at that location. So we didn't have it lit. There's no yeah. power here either, right? Yeah, there, there is. There, there is. There's uh, at the new location. It's, ne it's right next to a light pole. Um, when I say lit internally, it is two sheets of aluminum. The first one is cut with the letters cut out of it, so there's a void. It makes a shadow during the day. Um, I understand you have a bylaw about internally lit signs. You can tell me if that would strike it, but it's not a sign that glows. It's not a clear plastic sign. But you could put a light, a concealed light, low lumens and it would make the so letters reverse. I'm sorry, I, I thought this was, these were actually letters on. Mm. They're cut. They're cut in. Yeah. And is it the same, I think we asked this last time, but then we didn't get a, a, a real good answer, I believe. It's the same font that's on the, the school, the exact same font and spacing and lettering. And it, it can be the same. It, it, it's a, it has to be a stencil font because they're, they're um, cut, so there will be tabs so that the O in O doesn't fall out, and the, the triangle in <laughs> yeah. A doesn't fall out. Um, any other comments? Just yes. If we, if we do wait, um, I, I just don't see the benefit of that. Our, the committees, our committees already voted on this being the sign that they want. I don't think. It, it didn't. I didn't get the sense when we were at that meeting that people were going to change their minds. Um, right. And to and back to your point about the high school sign, I as I said, you're looking at your individual sign, right. your individual school, and I get that. Right. I'm just saying you've changed the nature of the whole facility here, and and at least at a minimum, I would like some commitment for somebody to look at this holistically and say, mm -hmm. what are we going to do about the high school, and how should we really have this? sign so that it looks like a true middle school high school campus and not like a middle school with something stuck behind it and that's what you you and you that's put, what you've got that's right what you've done that's what you've and done I, that's why i fully support what the design review committee has said that there ought to be some compatibility between the signs not doesn't have to replicate it um, but i just want to know that somebody is going to move on to that sort of broader issue as opposed to just say okay we got our middle school sign done we're done right because it's very myopic it's it's looking at only your project and i understand that's what you're doing right i'm just saying well, from we a, had high school elements to the project we had a performing arts center and a renovated arts i, sign. I hear that I hear my that. understanding of the high school sign is it was a gift from a class yeah and i i feel like we would hit a lot of resistance of ripping down a class gift sign right. um, and, it was and a spending gift. And it was a gift before there was a middle school in front of it right I'm just saying you you have changed the nature of it yes and we ought to make sure it's consistent and I'm I'm kind of fully on board with that yes I'm Nancy Hall finance director and a member of the school building committee um, I, I think it would be very fair to say that the members that are in attendance tonight will bring back the comments of the planning board about the fact that there needs to be a holistic look at that now that it is a campus and not just a single school. 
and that's since the school building committee also contains two members of the school committee, the superintendent and the school uh, finance director, you would have at least four members of that management team who would then have gotten that message communicated to them, and it would be in the minutes, so that they would then do something in a, either a capital plan or looking forward when they look at the campus overall. Because once they're done with the middle school project, you'll go back and say, well, this needs to be fixed or this needs to make it more consistent as you go through. Uh, myself, if, if a high school sign came before the committee, I would vote against it as it's outside of scope. I know there will be several other members as well who would vote that it would be outside of the scope of that particular project. It doesn't mean that we don't see the need for it. It just means that we're trying to be stewards of the project. And to Ian's I get point, that. I, I'm, I'm fully, I, I yeah. understand that completely. And right? to Ian's point, All I would like to know is that somebody will not drop this ball and will come back here and tell us I'm that we're looking at it broadly, that. right? And have that reflected in the minutes and communicate that back to the committee. And unfortunately, because you're wedded to this sign, everything will pivot around that particular sign and that design, right? So the compatibility that we seek yeah. is going to be it's going to pivot off this particular design. Right. And, but to Ian's point, this was not um, a discussion that was, okay, here's design review committee's comments and planning board's comments, well, we like this our sign anyways. This was probably a good hour to an hour and a half lively debate between members of the school committee because not all members are in love with the sign. Mm -hmm. But all members that are, were in attendance 13 out of 15 are in agreement that in a scaled down version, that it is a good representation of that school. So I, I, I'm on board with Ann. I'm, I do not like Paul, mm -mm. but such is life. Well, you know what? We don't, why do we have to settle? Why do we always have to settle? It's not settling, it's reaching a compromise and understanding other people's points of view. I understand that, and I'm big on consensus. I really, truly am. It was a vote. I, we didn't, it's not like we just sat there and had a debate. I understand that. We, we I voted and some were for it and right. some were against it. That's right. <laughs> that's what this and is the, here. That's what that this is going to be here, too. <laughs> yep. Right. right. Exactly. That's exactly what it's going to be here. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, I don't think we can ask the superintendent to make a commitment to um, conform um, the signage because he's going to be in Buford <laughs> <laughs> But I think that I, I wouldn't be asking the superintendent. <laughs> I'd be asking the school board. Mm -hmm. I, I would be asking the organization, sure. not the individual. So I think I would look to Robin, Robin, as a member of the uh, school board, to endeavor to conform the uh, the sign. Oh, okay. I'd ask Nancy. Uh, <laughs> but I'll still talk to them. <laughs> to endeavor to conform the signage. But we don't have funding for it now. We do have funding for the middle school, and we're running out of time. Right. And I think and it's going to become substantially more expensive the longer we debate it. And I think Jerry's correct. I think this would now be in the, in the hands of the school committee um, to put this forward as a, as a project. And can we get the school committee to come back to the planning board and say, We've looked at this. We think this is where it needs to go, even on the conceptual nature. Before we have to, we have to, you know, identify funds and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know that there's maybe a plan. Yeah, and I mean that, that it's an affirmative commitment to come back and, and share that with us. I mean, two me two members of the committee, uh, of the school building committee, are school committee members. Um, Rich Hebert and Mike Hayes. So we certainly can, neither one is here tonight. Uh, we certainly can bring it back to them and say, you know, would the school committee entertain um, coming back to the planning board to discuss the high school signage and whether or not we should look to replace that? I would, I would respectfully suggest that that would be a condition of. A, of any improvement. That seems like a reasonable condition. I don't know who would advise you, but I'll go along with it. Uh, 
Any other comments? So what do you want to do here? We have a motion? Yeah. Who's up? Who's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve the identification signed for the Lester Gates Middle School as shown on the renderings by Dorr and Whittier presented to the Planning Board on June 22nd, 2017 with an overall length of 15, 12 feet and an overall height of three foot four to three the base, not the pole. What's the height? The pole is nine feet. That includes the base and the pole, the nine right. feet. And nine feet is the height of the pole. The okay. sign itself from the and, and from the ground. Yeah, the sign up here three foot four. It was almost twelve before, right? I'm Just a way to make sure that. You've got this one and not the one. Here was the original one. proposal. And a height of 3.4 feet, except that the sign shall not be internally illuminated. It is the express wish of the planning board that signage from the middle school and high school be compatible as the two schools appear as one campus. The planning board asks the school committee to come back to the planning board to discuss a coordinated program on signage. Um, and this does not include, we haven't discussed lighting. It was just a condition not to be lit. Not to right. be internally lit. Okay. Okay. All right. But do we consider that to be with the cutout? I mean, that's kind of a, a nuance. Well, it's not internally lit, though. So? Okay. There's no lighting in it, right? Well, there's lighting, the way I understand it, you cut it out, there's actually the lighting inside that's illuminating the, the back of the letters, correct? No, I thought it was no. daylight. No. Well, I, I thought no you were saying not thing. to light it. No, no, it, we, we don't internally lit signs, Richard. No, no, I know that. But I thought that he was describing a process that was a bit different than a plastic internally lit. No. Like, if the... Okay, anyway, okay. Let it go. <laughs> I, I was describing a different process, but I understood that it doesn't matter. It, it just it won't be powered. Okay. And there's no way on God's earth we can remove that pole. <laughs> Is that the motion? It's not in the motion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the motion. It's not in the discussion, right? Oh, okay. I, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I again, it's all about I consensus. Sure right. I don't, ag day, I don't agree with it, but I, I don't feel like at all. consensus wise, if the. If we would understand. Oh. Well, okay, I get it. All right. I've made the motion. <laughs> so it's been <laughs> motion. Do we have a second? An e motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Reluctantly. Yes, I was going to say reluctantly too. Very reluctantly. But I, I mean, it's kind of hard for this board to give you a positive vote when we really don't like the blasted sign. <laughs> Thank you. 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 So please convey this to the board. Will do. Mm -hmm. It's in Nancy's capable hands. Um, so I have a question, though, yeah. Anne, about the what? Uh, if a letter is raised off the the, the face, and I'll be right back. Do you need a recess? Yeah, for a minute. Please. Okay. Okay, we're on we're on recess. Okay, we're running late, but this is the site plan administrative review for Four Union Street. I see we have our old friend back again. Yes. Okay. Got the floor. I, I guess uh, I'll, you wanna, I'll just start with the uh, architectural drawings that we have. You want? Yes, I have been to the design review. And, uh, the new set includes the changes that they had suggested. Okay. And maybe you could, I have the older set, so maybe you could just point out what those were or uh, are. Let's see. The gable end ended up being clapboards with a color selection. 
Uh, that was one of those oh, so suggestions. they changed they, they change it to uh, collaborative siting? Yeah, to confirm there was collaborative. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then uh, the six doors, uh, we kept as uh, six panel and painted blue. And then the balance of the building, we kept uh, the glass on the garage doors, we changed to the four single lights instead of uh, eight lights. And on the back side, uh, we had two uh, windows that would be facing the brewery. And are the dormers narrower? They look a bit narrower there in that drawing. Uh, those are the front doors. But they compared to the, the one I have, that, that looks, maybe it's just the perspective. Oh, it looks weird. Oh, it's the, angle. Oh, it's the angle? Okay. Yeah. yeah, they haven't changed. I think it's just looking at that boredom. Okay. I'm so confused. Step the addition back a foot from the existing building to create a little pause, and in that uh, the first five feet, we stepped it back two feet. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't understand that. Can you say that again? Sure, step the, it back. Yeah, the existing back? building line is uh, is one foot. Oh, okay. oh, I see. You, I get you it. You step the face back. Yeah, the yeah, existing okay. building. So we step the whole face of the addition back. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Well, that's this one foot. I see. Okay. Oh, and that actually now, now that, I get it. That makes sense now. Yeah, because right, the old the one other. was it was flush, right? Yeah, yeah. right. That was a change I suggested. And then it looks like since we're talking about that little um, setback um, or out, I don't know if what do you would call it, um, alcove. Um, is that a cased opening? It looks like from the the elevation, the the door that's all the way up in the left of the right elevation. Here, this, yeah, this, that elevation, that door is recessed. This back, exactly. About eight feet in. So there's trim around that. I see, though. Yes, the outside is case is a four foot case. Door. Okay, that's what they. Get. And that four feet is set back two feet. Okay. Uh, as opposed Where does that door go? Uh, this door, right here. That, if you look at the plan, that goes. That goes. Uh, will come back into the existing building. Oh, I only see one. I just see the door going in. Yeah, it doesn't look like it actually. It looks like it goes into a closet or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's just the uh, that's the small, and then that's the, the door into the existing. Oh, the so it's like a little seat. vestibule. Yeah, just a little vestibule. That's but that right. door is what we're seeing. That's blue. This is what that, we're seeing uh, right here. Yeah. Yeah, that door right there. But there's nothing. That's just a closet. Yep. There's just a hallway that leads into the the existing building. Oh. We recessed it back so the. Oh, is this an opening right here? That's what this is? Yes. Oh, okay. That's an existing uh, that's, door. I didn't pick that up. Yep. And the, the sprinkler room we just left exposed to the outside so if they had to get, get out of the service without fire. Uh, that's why, again, that was uh, exposed to the outside. <coughs> that's, the, that's the fire department access. Yes. I got it. Okay. Uh, again, dormers remain the same. Uh, actually, I think they're all in the name. <laughs> you know, but it's uh, uh, weathered wood. Yeah, same, same one, same now. The match is the existing, okay. Yes. This ends up being sort of a uh, ends up being lower. Yeah, we were trying to match the garage doors going all the way across, and this ends up being kind of shorter bays, if you were lower bays. Yep, the uh, the doors are uh, ten by eight. Ten by eight, so it's ten feet high. Uh, no, eight feet high, ten foot wide. Eight feet high, ten foot high. And what do you happen to know? Just ballpark. What are these? I think they're twelve foot high. Okay, that makes sense. So we try to scale it back down. Gotcha. And again, the uh, ceiling height is roughly about four feet. 
lower. And are these little boxes, are these um, lights? Uh, yes, light blocks. Light blocks. Exactly, what, probably what they have right now over the doors, correct? Yes, I submitted uh, with the design review, uh, uh, I don't know if they've got a picture of the light. Uh, it's a downwash light, it's yes. not a, it doesn't shine out. No. Okay. It's, uh, And you mentioned the color, the, the doors for the blue? Yeah, they had recommended, um, oh, the, the door color. Is that, the existing door color to me is kind of gray, right? It's been faded just because it's already about nine years old. But it is actually this? It's close to that. Okay. Yeah, Would you go back and do these doors or not? Uh, at some point, but they need to be done, yeah. So we'll do this color. to be each four holes. Uh, is that right? Mm -hmm. For site plan administrative view? I thought it was just Just majority? Plans. Yeah, it's just a majority. Laura okay. here? I think it's just a majority for, okay. sure, for site plan review. We should, we should confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, other questions? Where's the, uh, where's the site plan? And just for the, the dormer windows, they're six over six? Yes. Um, which would not necessarily match these, but I like these better anyway. But I think those just require grills. What are those? They're, probably there. they're just like a oh, yeah. double hung window. <coughs> Machine gun slots. All right, thank you. Um, are you saying that in the addition, you're putting two dormers in there? Uh, there'd be two facing um, Wait, Union Street. Yeah, the, okay. And then there'd be two f uh, on the opposite side. Facing the brewery. Okay. Laura, site plan review is just a majority. It's not 4F4, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, just to make sure. How tall is the attic, in other words, to the ridge line inside? You could put accessory apartments up there. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. But that's not what we're asking for. I know. At uh, this point, it'd be sprinkled and uh, we'll probably put a lot of the heating equipment up there. But if, we, if that's uh, the case, we'd have to come back for you and ask permission. Is the new is the site plan? Does this reflect the latest changes? The site plan that we're looking yes, at. Yes, it should. March twenty third one. That's what I'm, I'm looking a, at. There's a revision uh, date. There's what? a yeah, March twenty third revision block now. Yeah. Yes, this is uh, well, it's got a tier too. Okay. June thirteenth. Okay. I think he also added a handicapped parking spot in the last. So the lighting's not right here then, right? Aren't there three lights here? They wouldn't be shown on the plan. How is this shown? Be shown on here. And shown on here. I think we've, uh, again, we have three light blocks here. Uh, those would probably be what we'd go with. Right, so this isn't right on the, on the plan. And what goes in front of the, the new, what, what's in front of the new building? Is that, is that lawn all the way to the sidewalk? 
Yes, yeah, right here. That would be lined to the sidewalk. Nothing would go there. Nothing would park there. No dumpsters would be set there. It's no. Not, I just want to make sure that this is the face people will see from the street, right? Right. Well, so we thing. don't want anything to sort of junk it up, right? There's a that you're showing a dumpster here. there. The dumpster to the left. Is it on your other picture? I don't think it's not there currently. It's in the no, back. We, we relocated from where it sits. Permanently? Right now it's in the, if you see from the pictures, it's in the driveway side. Yeah, it's right next to the, to the new building. It actually cuts off some access to the new building, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's the new location for the, for the dumpster. It, uh, apparently it's back here. Right. So you are moving it to the front? Yes. Well, uh, uh, yes, to that area, to the corner. Is there any built way to put it somewhere where it's not part of what you see from the curb? I, I mean, I could eliminate it and go to barrel. It doesn't, it's more for convenience for the tenant. To be honest with you, I mean, I know that they would crap it most of the time anyway. <laughs> but. And is, was there, is there a proposal? I see the curb. Was That's there any existing. Kind of, was there any kind of fencing that was supposed to like block that dumpster? Uh, like right now, it's a curb. The curb that already exists, so we're just going to use it in that area. Yeah, that curb is going to come out when you build this thing, right? Yeah, but this, yeah, but that already exists. That curb, so we're yeah. Keep it. So the curb would basically stop like right here, right? Yeah. <coughs> Or take it out. You got to build in here. You got to put well, foundations yeah. and stuff, right? You might have to take that out. <sighs> Just to be able to construct it. So then you've done the, this is you added the handicap spot here. Yeah. That's the difference. You still have all the uh, spots along the side. And then you've added two over here in front, correct? Right. Um, questions? Richard, we'll start in with you this time. Um, well, I think I kind of asked my questions as I went through, really. Um, obviously, I know you don't show as a demo, but I mean, this window would be removed, right? Yes. Uh, um, and then on the elevation, these are shingles, right? You'd have to patch those shingles back. Because um, you, I would think you'd. Yes, uh, so we tie it back in with shingles to match. Yeah, the roofing. Right? Yeah, so like where the <coughs> this over here the gable delve exactly. Yeah. Yep. So we, we again patch the shingles back. Okay. So the backside shingles and the front the front addition is clabbered. Yes. And um, is the <clears throat> is it proposed to have a sign like that for Union, like a, a wood sign? Is that uh, that already exists? So if we can, we'll reuse the same one. Oh, is that there? Oh, yeah. right over here. I yeah. see. It. So we we might get it, re it to the center. might get it repainted. Okay. And then one uh, all of these that I see right here, these are just uh, doors. Are these windows here? Uh, the first two. Doors. Doors. Those will remain. And then the three windows would be removed. Two of the three will. If you look, this, oh, because this it one does, window will oh, be right here. Okay. Right. So and actually, those two windows will probably either reuse them or those are two windows we're going to add over, over here. And removing this window here for the apartment doesn't it, uh, impact the egress? There's still like no, two means of egress? Yeah. Okay. I think I have any Anything additional else? questions. Bill? Yeah, one of the things that Design Review talked about was if at some point when you're replacing existing garage doors to make them look like the... Yes, yeah, when it came time to replace them to try to <coughs> match, match that something look. similar. How old are the garage doors in your house? Uh, one's about a year old and the other two are about eight or 
Eight or I nine mean, years. They look pretty good. Yeah, but they're, they're mismatched. Well, yeah, the, someone put a ladder through one. Oh. So <laughs> we replaced one. I mean, I think you've come light years in terms of what the addition looks like. That's why we didn't see it before. <laughs> well, it was basically a continuation of one master building all the right. way down. Yeah. Right. At least with the foot step back and the atrium, I think you're, you're coming yeah, back up to break up, look. breaking up in the end, able. But you're breaking up that, so it's no longer just a long flat building. Yeah, we thought that was a, that they had a good idea when we did that, just to again give it a little more depth. Yeah. I'm still concerned about the density and a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's comparable to some of the other lots in the neighborhood, uh, but less than, actually. I think the existing building is uh, 3,200 square feet, and the proposed addition is uh, 1,413 square feet, so we end up with, I think, 50, 46, 13 mm -hmm. uh, square footage. I think next door is the brewery, they're, they're probably about 5,600, roughly. Well, like you said, Bill, I mean, this is the current elevation that people see, which is kind of boring, not too, it's not bad, but it's not great either. I think this has the potential to no, look No, no, I think nicer. the changes are suggested by design review and have come back from, looks, yeah, like okay. a horse, it looks like a horse barn, <laughs> but it's much better than that one. No, they're doing it. Well, I too am concerned. I mean, I think I mean, what you're showing us now is way better than what you had before. But I'm concerned about the utilization of the property itself. And I'm also concerned about all the pavement. Um, there's a lot of, you've got 15 parking spaces, fine. Is this for all of the worker bees that are in the, the bays or where they come and park their cars or how does all that parking work? Uh, actually, I think the pa overall pavement is probably less than what we have now because the building's taking up some of the pavement on the existing site. Uh, and the parking, uh, some, I know in the winter time they use the garage bay to park in too, usually it's snow and stuff like that. But usually the workers have a place to park out in front of the building now. We can continue to do that. And then there's the overflow around the back if needed. And th there appears to be, what is the access for the second bay in this proposed addition? Because it looks like it's, you know, right near the dumpster and the parking. Is there any possibility of taking that dumpster and moving it in back? I think I think we should do that. So that from, it from an access and a yes, so aesthetics that, perspective, right. right? So that the, the trash truck backs in and it's right there. If, if that's the case, we might eliminate the dumpster and just go with barrels. But then, uh, the, but that creates another issue if they don't cover them and we've got stuff everywhere. Well, uh, the barrels I uh, spoke with Graham Waste. The barrels they have for both recycling and trash have the covers already on them. So they, they, you don't take them off, but they hinge. They're a heavier barrel that they'll come and pick up. But if we move the dumpster back in here, I'm more concerned with snow removal. If the plow comes back to push it right into the dumpster, then we kind of create another issue. And we really don't want it out in front here to see. So we could certainly uh, you know, eliminate it. And, uh, so where would the barrels go then? Uh, we could put those around back. They're fairly, they're not, they're fairly small. So, you know, the guys can keep them in each of their bay out front and then around back for the tenants. We can put a couple against the house. Uh, again, they're not. But if, but if you were to um, <coughs> screen this dumpster from the world, in other words, fence it or do something with it, so that when you're coming down Old Country Way and turning onto Union Street, you don't see it. it John, John, there is screen. You can see the swinging doors in the front of it. Oh, okay. He, actually, on his plan, he does have doors in front of it, so 
Uh, or we could just put. We show the swinging gates for our fence. Get a picture of it now. Right now, it's kind of a white fence around the dumpster, so it's kind of. The last time I looked at it, it had a huge dumpster in there. That's oh, is this today. is this what's behind the car here? Is that what this is? Oh yeah, that's the white fence. Here, the, the dumpster. But it's, it's kind of smaller, hard. smaller dumpster. It's in a three-sided pen. So, on the plan, you're proposing to have that be a white fence on three sides around it, correct? Yeah, that's what we have now. We move it over to the uh, new location. We do the same. From the handicap access parking, how do you get into the building? Uh, you could either come in the rear door here or come around and, you know, depending oh. on what's there for the, uh, again, for the workers. That's a hike. So this is the accessible entrance that you've got, right? That's what he's showing you here. Right there. So this is the accessible entrance. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's no <clears throat> walkway around. No. That's right. You can't go this way. Nope. No. No. Well, that's the only... But if you if you park in one of those spots, you're basically walking in the lawn to get around to the front of the building. Yeah, again, it's it's, it's for the workers that work there, not for the public uh, to come in. Same thing with the restrooms and stuff. They're they're. Uh, That's not the point. There. I mean, basically, because you're putting in lawn and what have you, and let's say we have a big snowstorm, you plowed all of this. These people have to walk all the way around to get in. No. Oh. Like just walk on the street. They have to walk on the street. Are you talking about the workers that work at the building? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, there. or they could park out in front and come into the garage base. But then we're going in circles here. Yeah. Well, if they're parked there, then the people who use the the apartments will have to park here, right? Mm -hmm. and that means, so their access will be up going this way. Right? Why, if you move the, is the no. handicapped space for the, but the hand, the apartments are not handicapped accessible, are they? No, they're on a second floor with no other. Okay. Elevators. So if you were to take that handicapped access and move it to the front, where number eight is. Well, and I just wanted to point out, according to the elevation, there are three doors along this. Um, so that um, basically in front of 10, in front of 11 and 12, if you look at the elevation, there's one, two, three doors. Are they accessible? Uh, that again leads up to the second floor, so they, they'll be accessible. There's two, so there's two doors into the new, the, okay, the, into the new area. So I guess if they were workers per se, I'm just, pointing out that they wouldn't necessarily have to walk around. They could walk in the back door, correct? But aren't there internal yeah. partitions in the, in, those, in the building? Well, there's two spaces. Two bays, so two, right? one. So two partition. rental spaces. And uh, can you and get from... But they're probably going to be locked, right? I mean, they're not going to be open, necessarily. Can you get I mean, from... this is somebody's workspace, right? So he's not going to leave it open for handicap ex accessibility, right? But I guess these spaces are for the workers, though, correct? Not for the visiting public? I mean, there's not really visiting no, public. No, because it's the people who live in the apartments, too. Some of the, these are parking for this overflow for the front, and the, the workers are parking here. So I guess um, the... <clears throat> so you're, you were concerned that people would be walking around. I'm just saying, if you did happen to park there as an overflow, and you did work in one of the bays, you would have keys to walk in. I'm just looking at the handicap access, yeah. right? If these aren't uh, open, all three of them, if they're not open, handicap has to come all the way around. And I'm suggesting you move the handicap to the front. And I'm suggesting you just move that to there, which probably makes sense. Well, actually, yeah, if you move it to number eight, is that right, or nine, eight. that you have extra eight. space right there. Yeah. And it's much more immediately visible if somebody's driving in here, right? As opposed to stuffed in a corner. Yeah. 
But I guess again, it's the handicap for the apartments or for it, the, the business. It's not just the it's like not the apartments. The business. Right, yes. The apartments aren't handicap accessible. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Any other comments? I think it's um, an o really smushed on a lot. And I did have a contractor come up and tell me that I had to vote for this because it was so important. And I resent the fact that I was told that I had to vote for it. I really do. Hey, what can I say? I know. It, it's just, we all do the best we can do with what we have to work with. And my concern here is not about other contractors or what have you. My concern is about the town of Situate and what is in the best interest of the town of Situate. And Greenbush is changing. And it's changing slowly but inevitably. And I'm just trying to figure out if this is the highest and best use of this corner lot. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Tremendous amount of parking. I mean, these, there must be a... <coughs> Devlin has two garages. He has two spaces. You have one space, and then you're bringing in two more. So there's going to be a lot of worker bees working out of this place. Am I not... Am I correct? Yep, mostly storage, so they'll be gone for the day. There in the morning and afternoon. I have nothing further at this point. I mean, the, the additional space that we created, uh, you know, with the two bays. So, um, I think one of the other issues that was raised was about the the uh, TSS reduction uh, for the stormwater management system. So, where do we stand on that? I can address that. That's not an issue. And let me explain why. There's a, I, I added notes to the plan. The uh, TSS removal is not in the zoning bylaw. Um, it's not in the site plan regulations, which the stormwater was designed. The stormwater system that we proposed was designed under the site plan regulations. The stormwater bylaw is a separate set of regulations for stormwater uh, design. This site does not trigger the threshold, which is a 25% increase in impervious area. Um, because we have a reduction in impervious area, it's considered a, a, a redevelopment project, and by doing that, we use the BMPs or the best management practices. Um, the, I believe Peter mentioned at the last meeting, for your information, I think we achieved 87.5%, even though only 80 is required under the BMPs. This, this site had no TSS removal before came in with this application. Um, but the bottom line is the 90% rule does not apply. I did speak with the chairman of the Water Resource Committee. The committee's never met on the project. Um, her, her comment about the 90% rule was in an email to the, to the planning board wherein she had reviewed the letter from Merrill where, he ended, where they indicated that because we're in the Water Resource Protection District, 90% TSS removal is required. What they didn't take into account was, was where that 90% rule comes from. It comes from a, a set of regulations which, which uh, do not apply to this project. But again, we, we, we have maintained, I believe, 87.5%. So, okay, so that's, that's our response to that question that you had at the last meeting. Yeah, I think we have somebody here from, from uh, town engineers. Do we? Are we going to have somebody? We have um, Peter yeah. Palmieri. Mr. Here. Chairman, Peter oh, yeah. Palmieri yeah, from sure. uh, Merrill Engineers. Um, in our letter, we did state 90% was required. We took that based on the stormwater regulations um, because that's what we're asked to review. Um, we didn't get, go any further than that as far as whether the stormwater regulations actually applied or didn't apply. Um, so the basis was, according to the stormwater regulations, um, they do meet the 87% um, based on um, actually calculations we did, and, and we agree with that. But um, I guess the question is whether they have to follow the 90%. And according to the stormwater management regulations, they do. But Mr. Marabita was saying that the stormwater regulations don't apply here. Um, I am not an expert on that. Um, 
uh, again, I, I reviewed it um, based on the requirements of the stormwater regulations. So, were those only in the stormwater regulation? Yeah, they were. They're not in the zoning bylaw. I thought they modified the zoning bylaws with within the water resources uh, they, district. They, there are a lot of different uh, pieces to that water resource district, but mm -hmm. I looked through it about three or four times, and that's it's just not in there. But it is it, it's in the stormwater regulations. But I think Paul's right that he doesn't trigger it because he's not increasing impervious by twenty five percent or more. How much impervious are we adding? We've actually have a, a decrease of 609 square feet of impervious area because where that building is going is, uh, is the parking. Area. There's uh, concrete there, which is asphalt. being taken up. Asphalt. Uh, I mean the asphalt. Right, but the building is impervious too, right? So yeah, it is. But right. when you do the numbers. And, and still what's happening with the parking area? There, there's still a decrease of 609 square feet. That was calculated. That was on the original application as well. That that hasn't changed. The reason that is is that I think the reason that is is that a lot of that parking is pervious. It's some kind of material that's going to be considered pervious, and that's I would I was going to suggest that that. John go to the Water Resource Committee and at least show them the material and make sure that they agree that it's pervious and we're all on the same page Well, the it. design you have is the, is the pervious pavement and there's some serious details on there. That was also reviewed by your consultant. Um, okay, well, maybe, a maybe that's a design. Enough. We've used it on other projects and the reason we use it is because it is pervious mm -hmm. and it also well, it provides treatment, which you look for in the stone. You guys are comfortable with, with the pervious pavement, pavement design that it would yes, they, provide? Yes, the detail was actually right from the DEP's handbooks. So. Okay. And that's being uh, applied throughout this overflow parking area? The new parking area, yes. Right, the stuff in the back. The back. Part. That's all pervious pavement. Yes. And you're not going to put any type of a hedge or, or any type of greenery between yourself and the brewery? No, right now there's a uh, fence that's going to remain. What's the fence look like? You got it there? No, I don't think it's really shown yet. I mean, there's this. Is it? is it's a wooden. Uh, th that picture might have been taken when the fence was removed, but it, it's since been put back up. It's a wooden fence. Okay. Uh, so I think it starts off at four feet, then climbs to six feet as it uh -huh. continues to the back of the yard. And is the current hedge, will that have to be removed? Yes, it will be. Okay. Uh, we'll step just in front of that. So is there a landscaping plan beyond that? Uh, no, I didn't know if we wanted to... Um, you know, with the windows being shown there, if we want to put hedges and stuff in front of them, or I planned on maintaining the building with a grass line up to it. That won't have a walkway on that on that face. Not at this point. It'd just be they could walk through on the lawn. Okay. So they wear it out, and then you put a walkway. In. Yeah. <laughs> Um, any comments from the public? Anybody here? Okay. Well, and I just wanted to make a comment that <clears throat> I think this is the third iteration. Is that correct? That the first one where, where it had the, the apartments all the way up against the corner, right? So there was a separate building. Yes, that was it. Right? That was number one. Then number two was the sort of the extension of the building. Right, of, as sort of a straight extension, and now this one where it's scaled down. Yes. So I think, I guess I just wanted to comment that they certainly have listened to a lot of our comments and, and um, gone through the design review committee and listened to what we've had to say. So I think that should be commended. Thank you. Uh, and I agree with Ann that it, it may be a little bit overuse of the site, but at the same time, I'm looking at it like that you really listened to what we've said. So, you know, I would certainly be in favor of this. 
and no one told me to say anything. No huh. contractor came to me. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Do we have a motion? Yep. Oh, and also, I want to say for all of us, I want to be very specific that the things that happened with um, Ford Place, yeah. is that in the motion like it has to look exactly like this so that we don't have the same problem where the, the garage doors have the nice, it looks like this, the windows have the, the double transom or the transom over it. I mean, it looks like this. Yes, I mean, I brought... One of the things that we've done has been to ask people to put up like uh, a deposit. I mean, I don't know how else to make sure that people do it. Because mm -hmm. again, you know, what happened is then all of a sudden yeah. they just change it and they're like, oh, we don't like those windows. We're not going to like those. Now in place, we drove down expensive. there tonight, it looks fabulous. They fixed it. Better. Much, much better. Okay. Okay? They it may did not it. look fabulous. Well, <laughs> as good as it can look. <laughs> okay, I just, that's I, right. But again, I was trying to um, to get ahead of that situation where we wouldn't have to. I go think after people them. are learning their lessons. Okay. I hope they are. Okay. I just want to make sure that you know. Well, let's be these, clear. That yeah, no these drawings. Yeah, these drawings look and look ask. good, sure. and this is what we're approving, right? And it, you, uh, you can't just decide to say, oh, I don't like that door. I've or, run I run out like of the money. Window. You know, I'm going to change it. Yep. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah. That's all my point. I'm sorry. That's a good point. Okay. I haven't too much of that recently. Richard, can you eat at this point? No, I'll do it. Okay. That's fine. I'll do it. <laughs> um, I have That's great. Makes it shorter. I move to approve the site plan entitled Proposed Site Plan for 4 Union Street in Situate, Massachusetts by Ross Engineering Company, Inc. Dated March 23, 2017 with revisions through June 15, 2017. Because it meets the requirements of the Town of Situate Zoning Bylaw, Section 770.6, Site Plan Review Standards of Review to a degree consistent with reasonable use of the site the proposed permitted by the regulations of the district in which the land is located subject to the following conditions. All construction shall conform to the site plan entitled proposed site plan for 4 Union Street in Situate, Mass Massachusetts by Ross Engineering Inc. dated March 23, 2017 with revisions through June 15, 2017 except as it shall be modified to meet the conditions below and the elevations and floor plans entitled addition to Hallen Carpentry Shop 4 Union Street, Situate Sheet A1, Union Street and Old Country Way elevations. Sheet A2, Plans and Section. And Sheet A3, Rear Union Street elevation by David Tonis, Architect, East Bridgewater, dated June 2017. No changes shall be made to the detail without approval of the Planning Board. Prior, approval. Prior, Prior approval of the planning board. Should we make a comment about that the, the handicap space should be shown in the front? Or maybe you, maybe Laura's already done that. No, I didn't get that. So. All right, we'll do should that. We, we'll that do I think that, that was number eight. Okay. Today. The buildings shall meet all requirements of the Massachusetts State Building Code. Materials and details of construction shall meet all requirements of the DPW Board of Health. Fire Department, Building Department, where this site plan administrative review requires approval, permitting, or licensing from any local, state, or federal agency. Such required approval, permitting, or licensing is deemed a condition of the approval of this site plan. All necessary permits and approvals must be received prior to a building permit being issued. Fifteen parking spaces shall be provided, including a handicap space, which shall be located in space number eight to the f at the front of the building. Spaces shall be individually marked with pavement, striping, or concrete bumper stops. The applicant shall provide specs on a 16-foot tall garage door for the addition with the intent that when the existing garage doors must be replaced, matching doors shall be used. Is it a 16-foot door? I think it's a 12-foot door, the existing. All right, 12. 16-foot is the ceiling height. Would you consider changing the wall out now? 
Uh, the commercial door is a little bit more expensive. <laughs> it's not a. Um, but the point I was making earlier, you Chrysler slash at thirty years. So probably not in my lifetime would I ever see him be replaced. Uh, well, as I say, I've replaced one already, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll look into it. I, I can't. It would be at the tail end of the project if we do that. But if we ch if we change, we'll change all three. I'll see what's available. So I haven't looked in that size yet to see what is available, but we should be able to get something close. Well, and we should include that as part of our condition. Right? Which is? Which is that the applicant will evaluate and come back to the planning board with a plan for replacement of those doors. Yeah, but I mean, if he re if he replaces one, then I've got one out of the three. Mm -hmm. No, you got to replace. You got to replace them all. Yeah. And the one in the center was the one that was recently replaced because it has the different lights? Yes. That's correct. They didn't make the, the other model anymore, so. So, I'm sorry, the applicant will evaluate and come back to the planning board. The Concerning replacement of, of existing, of existing doors, right? right, existing. All three. All three. Existing of all three 12 foot doors, right. all three existing doors. doors. All set? And what would be inappropriate? Yeah, Let's put a time frame on that within the next 90 days. Yeah, 90 days is good. To what? 90 days from the issuing of the permit. Yeah, that might be a little bit more appropriate. It might take 90 days to get the permit. <laughs> okay. The addition, seven, the addition shall be set back a minimum of one foot from the existing structure to offset it from the older building and to visually establish each building as separate entities. The pedestrian opening to the leftmost side of the new addition shall be stepped back two feet. The gable end of the addition facing Old Country Way shall be a painted clapboard. The remainder of the building will be natural white cedar shingles. Ten blue clapboard siding shall be used to match the pedestrian doors that will provide entrance to the new bays and the pedestrian doors currently in the existing three bay structure. The color of the 12 foot overhead doors for the bays will be white, matching the white of the doors on the current building. 11. Two small square A21 windows shall be added to the facade facing the microbrewery. They are to be a pro a pro appropriately centered between the egress doors in that wall and shall be of the same size and height from the ground as an existing A square window already in place on the rear of the existing structure. 12. The light fixture shall be as per the architectural light fixture chosen by the applicant and shall be placed above the doors as per the plan. This detail shall be attached to the planning board decision. Roof shingles on the addition are to match the roof shingles on the existing structure. Required prior to application for a building permit. 14. The owner shall submit an affidavit, affidavit indicating that there is one two-bedroom apartment and one one-bedroom apartment above the existing building. Due to the available parking, no change in the number of bedrooms shall occur without prior planning board approval. 15. The development shall obtain all necessary approvals for the use of town sewer. Copies shall be provided to the planning board. The plan shall be modified to show a radius acceptable to the DPW at the entrance to the new parking area. It shall be changed to conform. Okay. Then we go on to the next one. The following note shall be added to the plans with a full paper copy provided to the planning board prior to application for a building permit. A. The previous parking material must be approved by the Town of Situate Water Division after obtain, obtaining input from the Water Resources Commission prior to application for a building permit. Required to the start of construction. 21. Whatever number. A pre-construction conference will be required prior to the start of construction, including the planning board's consulting engineer, a representative of the DPW, the site contractor, and the town planner. The applicant shall provide a check to the planning board to cover the cost of inspections by the town's consulting engineers. engineer. This shall include inspection of the installation of pervious pavement. The check shall be given to the town planner prior to scheduling the pre-construction conference. 
All clearing and earth moving operations shall only occur while erosion and sedimentation control measures are in place. See the approved stormwater permit for the information on erosion controls and the required crushed stone construction entrance, both of which shall be installed prior to start of work. Required during construction, stormwater control measures shall be installed and maintained according to the approved plan. Any changes shall require approval of the planning department. Water and sediment shall not be discharged to the street. Construction work shall not begin prior to 7 a.m. weekdays and 8 a.m. on Saturday and shall cease no later than 7 p.m. or sunset, which is whichever is earlier. No construction shall, tell, shall take place on Sunday or legal federal holidays. Um, just two things. Um, since Paul said that that detail on the pervious pavement does come from the DEP manual, maybe there isn't any need to have the Water Resources Committee okay. look at it. Yeah, and Peter's already said that this, yeah. this is a it's good detail, right? So, yeah. Yeah. so we get rid of A? Yeah, whichever one that one is. Whatever it is, it's gone. And yep. then the other thing I was going to ask is, on those apartments, are those both one bedroom in, in theory? I think, um, yeah, in theory, yeah. I think she said one, two bedroom two and one. Well, yeah, I think. One bedroom. Well, that's okay, I think that's supposed wrote, to be. But it, are they supposed to both be one bedroom? I think they're supposed to be both one bedroom. So we should modify that okay. accordingly. One other thing we didn't talk about is the dumpster. Yes, the dumpster needs to be. Are we eliminating the dumpster? Uh, I'll, it doesn't matter to me. As I say, I, I prefer to keep it. If it's an issue, that's kind of the only spot left, really. Um, I mean, we could put it in the way, way back, uh, but then snow removal becomes an issue. And then it's near the well, brewery, I so. It if it's. I think you're going to have to tear up this curb just to build this thing anyway. But if the dumpster's in there, then it needs to have the white fence around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that means you can't put those big 50 foot dumpsters in there, which I've seen in there on occasion. Right? So this is a small dumpster right here, right? Yeah, I think, I believe it's three yards. Yeah. Last time well, three or six yards, one of the two. A very large one sitting in there. Yeah, the, like the, a roofing dumpster. Yeah, okay, a container that has tools and trash. And there is a, a door on the front, correct? Uh, I, yes, I, I might not use that though. I find in the past that they don't uh, they end up they sagging or get hit. They, they just. It, it, it works for a few weeks and it just seems to drag. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll probably cover it like before and then it, um, it'll be hidden there. The dumpster has lids on them so they'll be down. Two suggestions. One is no further expansion of the building. And two, no apartments above the addition. I, I think, is that a restriction that I can't come back and ask for that? Or is that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it now. I'm suggesting that there be no no the apartments above enough, the addition. Right? What? When you say no further expansion of the building, we're basically saying the density on the site is large enough. So are you saying you want to come back and ask to increase well, it? I, I'd like to have that option. I don't know that I am, but... Um, You know, the parking requirements we have now have exceeded what we need. Um, I think you have the right under the zoning bylaw to apply for a special permit in the uh, business district for accessory dwelling. You can have up to three in the uh, business district. But I think. So are you asking for that now? No. No, no. no, no but I just. Under the <laughs> zoning bylaw, he would have the right to come back to this board, assuming you had a special permit on granting authority at that time, and ask for that accessory uh, dwelling use. It's it's his only way of doing it. If he was in the village overlay district, he could have um, he could have up to 16 units of housing per 40,000 square feet. On this site, he could have eight. He's got two now, and what I'm saying, he. He wouldn't come back under the village overlay district for obvious reasons, but 
the bylaw does give them the opportunity or any other property owner to come up to the planning board with a special permit application for an accessory dwelling in the business district. But I would, submit, I would submit, Paul, that I don't think the building would pass the requirements to set out for business, business overlay district. Right. Well, it doesn't. I think that was we did that at the very the very first yeah. iteration. We I mean, said we've already, we've already plowed that. Well, the, the first the first time we came in was on the village overlay district. That was that was something different. He was coming in with a separate standalone. Building. Correct. Correct. Well, you know, part of the all, you know all I'm, all I'm suggesting is that he or any subsequent property owner would have the right to come back to this board and. Submit a special permit, a special permit application. It doesn't mean you're going to approve it, but at least they have that right. And what I'm concerned about is the motion you're thinking of making would preclude someone from having that right or ability to be able to do that in the future. Well, we're concerned about the opposite, which is getting pregnant one addition at a time, right? Which is what what it sounds like you want to do. Right. Like we've already said, the density on this site is really maxed out, right? And so now you're saying, well, we want to preserve the ability to come back and increase that density again. I didn't say what I'm suggesting is that you, I didn't say you give up that right now. I didn't say he would be in increasing the building density. Uh, well, that was the first question, right? No further expansion of the building. Yeah, I don't feel the problem on that. And I mean, I'd rather not give up the value. If there's a value to that in the future, it's, it's like saying you can th add on to your house. One of the things I think you need to consider here, okay, this is a very, very dense use of this property. And I think under the circumstances, there are some of us that feel that maybe this shouldn't be. So I guess maybe you're pushing things, pushing the envelope a little bit more than should be pushed. So if I, I agree with Bill, no further expansion of this property. It's done. And you said earlier that you were going to put your mechanicals up on the, in the attic. Yes, it has to be heated up there for the sprinkler system. So uh, they will. Right. And, you know, I mean, let, let's not push this any further than it needs to be, please? Yeah, I, I as I say, I don't intend to, but as I say, if it, it, it doesn't matter the value. I don't think it would be feasible anyway, but, but I know. Let's just... What is, what do you yeah. want added to this bill? No further expansion of this site yeah. shall be permitted <coughs> what uh, shall be permitted or shall or be there shall be no further expansion there shall be no further expansion of this site of the, the building and in, in you know whatever okay. right okay. the site includes the building so uh, I understand it you got the right to do it. What I'm suggesting is that you give that right up at this decision. I mean, what's the what's the value of that? Mm -hmm. What's the value future value of that? Yeah, I mean, if there's a need in the future, we come back. Yeah. Now we can't come back. That's what they're doing. They're taking away your right to come back. They're setting a destiny on the property where you have the right to apply for it. That's, that was my point. Yeah. You, know, you have the right to apply in the future. I know that's what I'd like All to right, keep we, up. Um, you, you want to take a five minute recess while so you go figure it out and we do something else? I mean, if we've got our hands tied, it's, it's not fair, then... Life isn't. Yeah, I realize that. I mean, I, I felt like I'm being treated a little different. We have other rights. We go through, do this, we meet the setbacks, and then we come here at the last minute, uh, the very last paragraph and the last sentence. You say, oh, no further expansion, because... Do you have plans to expand this? 
What's that? Do you have plans to expand this? No, I don't at this point. But the same way if someone has a single-family home they built, uh, you can't expand that. Or if the need requires to come back, the same way. I'm not looking to do anything under the radar. If I, if, I, if someone or if I sell the building and someone else wants to come forward with it, it does put a restrictive value on the on the property in the future as to what someone could do with it or what value it has to it, whether it could be change of use or other well, things they that, that... They could come in and propose a change of use. They could propose to tear this whole thing down and build mm -hmm. something new, which would be okay, okay as well. But then, th but then they would increase the density if they did that according to this, so they wouldn't be able to do it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't, uh, the same size, they couldn't build a brewery on it if it needed more parking. That's increasing the density. So it, it's kind of, it's not just the apartment that you, I understand you're trying to stop that, but if it gets torn down in 20 years and we have got to put a restaurant in there, we could design the park in there, but there's a restriction on the property that you can't do that because you can't expand. So you're limited to 15 space, spaces too. It's not just the building and the apartment. So that's what I'm of if that area changes and you know things happen in the future, that's why there. As I say, I, I don't plan on putting an apartment up there. Um, there, it's storage for now. But to put the restriction on really takes away the use of property not only uh, now but in the future. If something else becomes same way, the train comes through or or different area, different things happen, it gets rezoned. We're still stuck with that restriction that I can't get off. That's. That's all I'm asking. Uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, maybe a uh, better wording that would be is that he could not do any further expansion of the of the building or the property. The building envelope, unless approved by the planning board. Under special permit. Yeah, I mean that's fair enough. Yeah. I don't think you can say under special permit because it's not by law. If it's not a special permit use, then you know it's right. the zoning bylaw is not going to support it. All right. All right. So what is this going to say? No further expansion. Unless uh, it comes back before the planning board. Right. Okay. Yes, I certainly you agree with that. Permit. Hmm? You can't, you can't, can't do, do that. that as a special permit yeah, you, yeah. by law. Okay. okay. Regulations so, might, might change in the future, too, and right. it could be more restrictive. Okay. All right, I'll move this motion as amended. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oops. And what about the flip side? All those opposed? Aye. All those abstaining? I abstain. I don't like it. It's too dense. So wait a minute, what, what was your vote now? Two. We got two one and one abstention. So it passes. So no, I think so. Uh, I think no. we need, I think I so we need think either so. a yay or a nay from you, Anne. I think you need you need three. I think two and two, but he doesn't have it. And well, I we don't have a vote from Anne. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, so. okay. Well, and the um, and upset. your no vote was was it primarily on the conditions? No, I'm concerned with the density of pedestrian traffic. So that's from. Can I repoll? Re All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. For the same reasons the bill reiterated density, et cetera. So right now you don't have you don't have this. Uh -huh. I don't think we've got the approval. Well, it's not opposed. action. It's uh, two to two. Sorry? So the vote was uh, tied, oh, which means two, two, two. Two. so there is no two approval. Four and two against. I don't think there's an approval there. Do, do you think that was approved? No, it's two and two. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't see how you could say that was approved. I don't know if that's what you're two trying two. to say. Yeah, well, okay. Right. So you could come back to the full board. Sorry about that. Thank you. Or is, uh, is there anything that would change your mind in the sense of? Where, um, like, if there was a restriction on that, uh, as far as never to be an apartment, would that change your vote? Or? I think it's one of the, it's one of the concerns that I have because I got something that I've got a density now. The density would increase by the time I added two two apartments above it. Right. 
but we're not voting to add apartments. Right? No. No. But we're also not voting to preclude the ability to add apartments either. Agreed. But I guess <clears throat> in the essence of fairness, if if that condition was reread into it, or the motion had that? We, I actually, the reality is we can't do that. You know, it's really. We can entertain a separate motion, right? Two to two, so if there was a change to the motion mm -hmm. that would change a vote, then we could entertain a second motion. And what would that second motion be? I don't know. Okay. All right, why don't you repoll the board? On the same motion that's, yes. that's on the floor. So I, I will repoll again. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'll, I'll vote for it. Don't like it? Thank you. Okay, three to one. Thank you. I do appreciate all the work and effort. I know that's difficult. We, we will be back with the garage door. The what? The garage, garage door. door. That, would, that would be very helpful. Uh, it would show an effort of good faith. As <laughs> such as it might be. Okay. Sorry, sweetie. It's a quarter of 10, and I realize we're on our agenda item for 8.30. <laughs> uh, we could be here for a little while. But, it's hot in um, here, too, I'll yes. say. <laughs> uh, this is a public hearing accessory dwelling special permit for 15 10th Avenue. Um, just to let you know, um, this is a special permit, so it would require four out of four here, since Mr. Bornstein's not here today. Okay. Hi. Hi. Just Hi. identify yourselves and... Hi, I'm Maureen O'Brien Schindler. Okay. I'm Jerry Schindler. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, why don't you just give us an overview of what you're proposing to do here? So what we're proposing to do is um, my wife and I uh, purchased uh, her family's home uh, back a few years ago. And uh, we're looking to uh, you know, take the existing home down. It, it's had a lot of damage over the years from the storms. There's a lot of, uh, the foundation's been compromised a lot, of, you know. So anyway, we went through, you know, going back a year ago, we went to the uh, conservation and uh, submitted plans to them, and uh, they approved it, you know, based on their recommendations. And then so you we got an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, then we went to the Zoning Board, uh, and based on, you know, what we needed to do for them, you know, so everything's being done right. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, the home goes back to the, to the early 50s with my wife's family, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to keep it, you know, you know, in the home, my wife and I, you know, want to, uh, you know, move down there, and uh, and then we okay, so got the with the. Board, just so I'm trying to keep the sequencing clear here. The zoning board approved. The zoning board approved what they needed to approve. Then the. So uh, we, have, we have a zoning board decision. So this was a non-conforming lot. Is that what this was? Um. It a raise and reconstruct. That is a non-conforming. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Non-conforming. Yeah. It was built before the. Oh yes, right. It, it, it's, 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 it's one of the larger lots on the street because my mother and father-in-law years back uh, purchased some extra property, so it's a much wider lot than most of the lots down there. You know, most of them are very narrow. This one, ha this is the widest lot I think on the street. And then um, going back a year ago, before there was a change with the building inspector, um, I got with Mr. Duggan, and you know, he he was very helpful and, and directed uh, my wife and I as you know next steps and where to go and. And that's how we, you know, went out into went out into building. So we 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 seeked out all the advice and spoke to all the right people and went to the different boards and and did the approvals that we needed to do. And now we're in front of all of you this evening for the uh, accessory dwelling permit. And the accessory dwelling is in addition to what you now built. I'm, I'm just. I just want to make sure I'm we clear. have um, not built anything yet. We're anything. No. Okay. So this is to build the accessory dwelling while you're building. Yes. The primary yeah. Residences exactly. Okay. Right. It's all new construction. Gotcha. Take you know tearing down the existing home mm -hmm. that's you know well over seventy years old okay. plus, and uh, putting up the new structure. Right. And you should have 
all the plans there that we have. Yeah, and could could um, just to be clear, could could you just point out what this segment here is going to be the accessory dwelling? Is that is that what we're looking at? This is the primary residence, and then this this sort of yes, box yes, here so is the accessory dwelling. So this is the primary. This yep. is the primary residence, which has the second floor. Right. And then this here is the accessory. Dwelling. Which is on the same floor. Single floor. floor right. Okay. So okay. No basement. Oh, cool. Okay. Good. Is it being elevated? Yes, it's elevated. Uh, the zoning uh, conservation, so that we had an elevated based on the flood, and that's all been approved by that. Okay. So whatever you know, recommendations were, we, we, we complied, and um, they gave us the permit. Okay. Thank you. And speaking of that you're elevating it I think when I was reading um, the notes that you said um, Laura it's like not on piers elevating no. it. you're actually raising the, the dirt or the foundation right correct correct and, and the reason we're doing that because medically um, it looks better for the neighborhood I mean yeah. aesthetically yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. it's getting it, late <laughs> yeah. Getting I, you, know, you know what I'm saying it looks it looks better you know we, mo we know most of the neighbors on the streets and you know we're, we're trying to take down a home that needs a lot of work and put up a new home that looks nice. And um, how do we get in and out of the accessory dwelling? Where are the two means of eating? Yep. I see the main door here. There's a slider in the living room. And is this the other means right here? So uh, where I am is. There's a the the door. Exit. Right, so this is the main entrance here, right door. And then you also have the back entrance here. So is this at grade level, this deck? This or are there a, stairs? The stairs, well, this is, the deck comes out and then the stairs go down to the ground. Oh, so it's going out this way? Yeah. So there's there's a free path that we have. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, if you look at the back elevation, it shows the, the deck. So, right here, that would be the study last row from the accessory dwelling. Yeah, I did look at that, but it looked like it was all rail. I didn't see how you'd get out. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But maybe, maybe these are stairs? I wasn't quite sure whether that represented stairs. But it must. There's a, sli uh, there's a slider in the back. Right, but once you come out on the deck, right, then you get off that deck? Yeah, yes. the, the, the stairs yeah. to go to the back, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it yes. just looked like it was all caged in. Oh, no, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Okay, other questions? Richard? Um, I wish that it would show, I, I know the, I'm looking at the elevations, but I don't really have a, a perception of what, what the, um, the dirt is gonna be. I mean, that was one of your comments, right, Laura, was the fact that it's elevated up and that there wasn't, was it the parking was an issue? Well, the parking's a little bit of an issue and then the, the, the lot, the, you know, the property stores a certain amount of flood water because of where the elevation is now. So if you fill, that storage goes away. But that's something the Conservation Commission really should be looking at. Yeah, the conservation, we met with conservation. They approved it. They, they asked for a, uh, there's a, re a, like a small retaining wall that's going to go on the right side of the lot for displacement. Um, and that's what they recommended, and that's and they approved it based on what they wanted done, and then we did exactly what they so asked. So when you say the right side, this side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is really You're right on the rise. Is this this Tenth Avenue comes up from the water goes up, goes up? It actually comes up like that, and you're right there on, on the. We're at the start of the uh, rise, yeah. half the. the Brian's house. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the the conservation commission has has ask for a retaining wall along this property yeah, line? Yeah, we're right here like adjacent by the house where the driveway uh -huh. is because we have a wider lot here. Yeah. So they wanted a wall here just for like, so the water, as far as displacement, the calculations, mm -hmm. we had a real calculation report and it was all filed and based on that they approved that. that okay. Be there. And this is all on the wetland buffer right. over here, right? Exactly. Okay. It's all been locked. And okay. <laughs> And there is a connection between the accessory dwelling and the main house, yes, correct? Yes, I know that's required, and I'll show you that. Right, yeah, right there. Just wanted to make sure that that yes, was okay. Yes. Yeah. 
And did you mention that was a, the accessory dwelling you're planning for a family member, or is that uh, mm. for like a um, mother, father? Yes, brother. Oh, brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those would all be family members. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just curious. I mean, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not part of the regulations, but I was just curious. Well, here's your yeah. I'm just this one. I missed this. Oh, yeah. It's a very deep lot, too, so. Do you have access on both on two streets? No, you go all the way back to another street. It's a paper street, like whatever you call it. It's like it's all conservation. Right, and right, right. Okay. There's yeah. uh, there's kind of like a like a it's Seventh Ave. It's um, I where where is the parking? Yeah, I'm I was just gonna say the parking where doesn't the show. Parking? Well, it's it it's right there to the side of the house. I'm sorry. To the it's just not called out. To the I know it's right here. It's always it's, 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 you can park four cars here. Wouldn't that be above the retaining wall though? Well, it's going to be on top. Well, the retaining wall is only like this side. Right. But how do you get the? So the car. So you're going to you know you're going to drive up onto the. The so the earth is going to be filled up to the top of the correct. retaining wall, right? Right, exactly. So you're going to park on top of it. Right. Oh, okay, right. I get it. Right. Okay, right. I was thinking it was the other way around. I was right. like, okay, makes sense now. Right. And can you park a car or two in front? You can if you need to, but we've okay. plenty of room on the side. All right. There's plenty of speed here. If you look at the street. On the street, not on the street, though. No, not on the street. No, no, no. Yeah. no nobody parks on, on, the, on the Nobody parks on that street. Yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. Here. Was, um, I didn't take into account because the, the retaining wall is in the front. So you're saying it would no. be like a ramp going? No, 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 just on the side. Well, the, this is showing it shows it coming around. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's the house. That, that's the like for the uh, what do you call it? Yeah, the, uh, this, this here. How they're grading? How they're bringing the property up, the land up around the house to protect it from uh, floodwaters? Yeah, but you're not going to be able to get a car up there. Yeah, the question is, can you no drive a car over there. this, right? Yeah. No, no, I mean, I'm not sure. It's not, it's not like that. I mean, it's almost right. like, it's going to have a slight slope up. So you are going to have a ramp, essentially. Yeah, it's going to be like, what, what right, it's going to be graded up right. to so the top of the wall. Right. So it's going to, you're going to have a wall like this, and Wall and this will be this will be the side, right? So you're going to park here, correct? Right? Yes. But there, you'll be able to drive down. This will be a gradual enough grade. Yes. That you on, can do on both sides, right? Exactly. So what's the point of the retaining wall there then? It was for displacement. Um, they want to move the water around. Right. Oh, it around was, the lot. It was a conservation thing that they asked. Well, they usually try to avoid something called channelizing. Like they they. Exactly. don't want to force that water into channels but what this will do what maybe your engineer was doing is this gets you out of the floodplain so well, it does that you don't have to put piers and you don't right. have to you know you probably don't have to pay flood insurance because you're up higher um it's you know fema accepts it so how high up is it that's what i'm trying to figure out as far as the wall well, you get two different things out of it. You can have it says zero to three foot high stack block retaining wall. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the wall is separate from the house, so the grade around the house is twenty five. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you get down into that driveway area. And then you know, the so it's like a natural hill from the house. Going this way. Correct. So it's going right. That, that I sort of get. Right. It's really how do you get the cars up here, right? Well, so. but this isn't like. It's I, I think there's going to be a couple. Of yeah, cars. I mean, it's just. I just you know, kind of conduct it's a very a gradual um, slope. It's not even. Well, well it's not going to be gradual where that wall is. It's going to drop down like a couple feet there. This is Unless like, you regrade the front, here, right? And this is. Um, I mean, my engineer went through all of that, like with the conservation and the zoning. I mean, I'm not in the business. No, we're just trying to understand how you, right. how, because we need to make sure you have enough parking, right? So right. if this is the parking space, the question is, how do you get past this retaining wall? Right. And the only way to do that, coming from the front, 
is to grade it up so that it's flush or above that wall, right? And yeah. I don't know that you've got enough distance, it's 15 feet there, and if it's a three foot wall, that's a one in five yeah, slope, right? That's a 20% slope. And, yeah. yeah, there's also a parking spot that's going to be here in the front of the accessory mm -hmm. as well. This looked like you could fit, this is about 25 by 30, so you can't quite fit two cars No, it wouldn't be two cars, yeah, they're going to one car. Well, yeah. I think you can fit, you can't fit two side by side there? Oh, you can. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah you can fit oh, two yeah. side by side in front of the accessory dwelling, but I think that's the only parking that I see. Um, where do you put two side by side? Maybe you need to get your engineer to just show the parking. And then, yeah, I, think, I think you can fit right here. two cars here. Uh, well, well, they're going to be much bigger than that, but here... Oh, that is that Here's the existing? One. That's existing. So that's, so that's all that's going to come out. That's coming down. Yeah. Yeah. So they're talking about parking in here. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they can do that. But the, the, this whole then distance is about. It. I believe this whole distance is about 15 feet. No, it's 15 feet from here. To oh, there. oh, okay, okay. I'm from sorry. Here about there double there that. About 30. 30 feet, but yeah. you couldn't necessarily quite fit two cars in there. You Where? Know, like one back of the other. <laughs> no. You could put um, two for the accessory dwelling. Right. The yeah. question is, yeah. is this really this is a accessible parking, right? Yeah. right? This is a gradual slope that comes up. It's I this mean, even if you, right. if you I mean, it is now. Well, it's do, when they put the yeah. wall One, in, what's the two, slope going to look like? Across the yeah. yeah. One there. To get the engineer to show where the parking is going to go. Yeah, but parking um, is a piece of this. I'm sure he can do it with everything you're saying. Yeah. Else. I mean, I'm just trying to explain it just, just so I can try to get things. Um, I think I get it. I think this yeah. is the issue, right? Here's the street out here, right? right. You gotta, and you got to come up and that's work. three feet, right? And right. that's 15, right? That's a 20% slope is what that is, right? That's what that is, which is pretty severe for, for, a, for, a, drive. for a drive, particularly wintertime drive and all that. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know at the end of the day where that's good, bad, or different, but, um, and it feels like in order to do that, you actually have to have enough cover to go over the wall, right? Because you don't want to be hitting the wall no, with your the car. Wall, yeah, the wall has to be able to support the car driving over. Correct. And everything right. inside. But the wall's not going to be, the wall's going to be like on the side. It's, here's the wall, and it's a slope up with a cosmic. But, it's but he's showing the retaining wall here, that. though. That's what I'm saying. Is they've actually showed it coming around the corner, yeah. coming all the way to here. That's what this drawing shows. And where it's done, there's no, no room beside it. Right. right. So I think we need your engineer to sort of resolve how this piece is going to work. You mean this wall right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah if you look so at the, the drawing, side wall is not the issue, it's the wall in the, the front. Drawing, the, the retaining wall comes all the way around and comes all the way here, right? That's the way this is shown. It turns the corner and yeah. comes this way. Yeah. Right? So that's what he's shown. And that's why we're saying, how do, how do you get cars in here, right? Yeah. With this wall here. If the wall wasn't there, yeah, I agree, right? But but it, it appears that they've shown that the retaining wall is coming across the front as well. Okay. So I, I know it's not the case about the retaining wall. Tara, we'll just get the, we'll come back with the engineer. Well, then we need to get him to revise this drawing because he's showing it with the retaining wall, right? And this was this. There is Something. a retaining wall up against the house. Yeah, well, he shot it going all the way across. Right, but there is one up against the house based on the conservation of in regard to the flood zone. So there right. is one up against the house. And well, I, I would see why, I mean, I could understand why he continued it then, is that he's trying to get, get the site <coughs> elevation to a particular site, right? And if he's got a big drop here, he needs a retaining wall, otherwise he won't be able to keep the soil there, so. We probably just need him to clarify this yeah. detail to say how do we get cars up there, <coughs> and what does it look like, and if if there's no wall there, then he should or, modify the drawing. Or the other option, I live if this is to still have the retaining wall, and then right in front of the retaining wall, like don't have don't have any dirt, like yeah. have that be just gravel or or it actually says concrete, so you'd park. Like almost like the bumper would be up to the wall, meaning that. Yeah, I just don't know if that's enough. It and, says and what that means 
to backing out onto the street. I what do you need, 12? It's about a foot there. Um, what do you need, Laura, 12? My car is 18, and it's like a yeah. mid-sized car. Okay. Um, and you're going to the building as opposed to, to the wall, so I think you lose maybe a foot there. Right, the 15 feet to the corner of the building, building. not to the wall, so you're going to lose a foot, foot and a half there. So I, I think it would be better if we just got that clarified, yeah. right? I mean, it doesn't have to be engineered. It's got to be a, just a sketch showing what, what yeah, the wall. It, well, I think, uh, where did this plan go? Did, was this something that went to the CONCOM? Yeah, this plan approved by the CONCOM, right? Right. So the Conservation Commission approved this. So if it changes, it's probably got to go back yep. there. Right? Okay, I don't understand why. If this, the accessory apartment, accessory dwelling is here, the proposed two-story dwelling is there. Mm -hmm. This all, all this stuff goes away. Why can't a car sort of parallel park here and you can have three cars there? Oh, you can. And then that would preclude what we're trying to deal with in terms of the slope and the retaining wall. So you end up with your four spaces. I'm just trying to deal with what people are telling me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what, no. so what I, are you I'm not trying to design this. I'm just I trying know. to make, just right. make sure it makes sense. And um, you know, I don't think my car, my Jeep is 18 feet. Suburbans are 18 feet. Yeah. Oh, it probably. Well, you is. have to plan for standard it's size, right? Right. right. So uh, I think they're more like 10 or 12 feet. They're but if you had a car parked in here, right. and then you had three here. Uh, that's pretty tight for three, right? Well, standard width is. Well, let's let his, his engineer's going to use like yeah, engineering like principles and all that. All right. Yeah. As I mean, you say, we're not wedded to having a park here as long as you can get four cars Four cars somewhere. Right. Yeah. How many guys you want on this Four. Four. Four parking spaces. Two okay. for the main and two for the accessory. Right. right. Two and two. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I think that's all we... Back to back, right? They, they can, can do back to back. As long as you can get four in and you oh, get into oh, it. Oh, they can do tandem. Yeah. yeah, but we didn't think that there was enough, like for in front of the, the accessory dwelling, to have tandem spaces. That's what Laura was saying. Yeah. And then Anne was saying, well, is there enough to put three abreast, and then put a parallel park spot right here or something? What you may run into is just the, the walkway access into the house and all that. But you know what? I think we should leave it to you and your engineers to figure it out. Okay. And just. Is, us, it, is everything else? Um, any other questions? Uh, we well, let's let's see yeah. if we've got anything else. Um, how about how about septic? What, um, what's the plan? Sewer. Yeah, the town, so you're on town sewer, so you're right. okay there. Yep. Um, and did egress and the, the sort of look and feel. It's all going to be the same. It's going to look like. One house essentially. Mm -hmm. right? That was that's the, that's yeah. the goal. Okay. Yeah. How come you don't have any el um, windows or anything on the left elevation? I mean, it's um, because you know the house is next door in that in neighborhood of like right next to it. Smushed. Yeah, the clothes little, you know, so you have pri more privacy. And the house beside us is very high. It's like three stories high, so they can look down. <laughs> I, I, you know, you do whatever it is that you want to do. However, in terms of light, in terms of anything, this is what I do for a living. Oh, okay. And I would strongly recommend that you think about having windows, even though you could cover them with something, that to allow the light to come in. That okay. it, it would be very, just very, very, very dark. Think long and hard about what you're doing. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Appreciate it. Um, any other questions? No, with the exception uh, of parking, I think it's a go. Right. Yeah. I don't do we have any questions from the public? All right. Okay. So how, what's, the, what's the next step in the process? You're going to hear it in two seconds. No, oh, come oh. sit down. <laughs> 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 I, I move to continue the public hearing for the accessory dwelling special permit for 15 10th Avenue until July 13th, 2017 at 9 p.m. to clarify the parking the meeting on the 13th will be at the public safety complex. What? Do you know that there is no audio up there? Is that the police station up yes. there? Yeah, right now that's 
where we have planned we because have of the, the toll brothers. Toll brothers. Coming, okay, so toll brothers we need a bigger. Oh, okay. We need yeah. a much bigger room. You need a bigger room, and there were over 100 people there the other night, and they didn't mm -hmm. have room for them, and there was no sound system. So that's something you need to keep in mind: is a sound system well, of some. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with <laughs> that. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does he need to sign okay. something? Um, no. No. Okay. All right. So we just need that clarified and then yeah, come back on the 13th and 13th of uh, July. Square away. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, moving along. We're only an hour and 10 minutes behind. Thanks. We're catching up though. Now we're getting. <laughs> Public hearing. We're in Scenic Road, 724 Country Way. Proposed work to remove a nine foot. Norway maple. Looks okay. like used to Hello. be up this week. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Mike, Mike Breen uh, from the Highway Department and Public Good Grounds. Right? Nice right, to see tell you. Tell us what you want to do. Um, there's a Norway maple on 724 Country Way. Um, do, you have, uh, do you have pictures? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. There's a crack, there's a crack through the center of the tree. Uh, it was one fourth inch um, a year ago. Now it's like three eighths inch, which is. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have it on my phone too. If you this is a better picture than a, the one I have here. Yeah, but more concerning is the sidewalk is being pushed up, um, and it's uh, a hazard. There's there is no immediate danger for the tree falling. I had uh, Bartlett tree experts um, Abraham Monhan. He's a certified arborist. Take a look at it. He wasn't um, concerned of it immediately falling, but he did say um, there was some concerns about the crack in the tree. And it is quite a large tree. It's nine foot. Um, it's a pretty tree. Circumference. Yeah. So. Did he say it can't be saved? Yeah, he didn't think it had much life left in it, but he said he was more c concerned about the sidewalk pushing up than he was more the crack, that it was uh, a, an immediate danger to come down. But he, he did say that it should be on our list to take it down. How old is the tree? That I don't know. I can find out when I cut it down. <laughs> And it is it is causing if you if you go out to the site it is pushing the sidewalk. It's right dangerous. Up it's it is dangerous. It's a public yeah. safety issue that needs to be addressed. Yes. <laughs> well, you go. Yep. It's very simple. Questions. And the tree, it's in the public way. Yes. I have no problem with taking the tree down. You need a motion to move to remove the tree. Let me ask if there's anybody here who wants to make a comment. Okay, no public comment. Well, did you speak to the obviously the owners of the house? Um, yes, they they were the <laughs> ones who were concerned about it, uh, you know, causing a problem with limbs falling. And I had National Grid come up and cut all the dead out of the tree, and uh, they're still concerned because of that big crack that it could cause um, some harm to, like I said, safety to any pedestrians walking by if it does split. Okay. Well, I, for one, would be fa in favor of saving the tree if it were possible to save it and moving the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if it's not possible to save the tree, then, then I suppose it's time to remove it. Okay. And so the, just to be clear, the, the person at the house, is that you, sir? Yes. Um, uh, and you're in favor of removing it? Yes. Um, actually, the town has been, uh, in the 37 years we've been living there, the town has been very proactive about uh, tending the, the tree. It is very old, it is very huge. Uh, they even cut out a huge, enormous spur, if that's what the right terminology is, a number of years ago. It was a small tree in its own right. Uh, but the branches, uh, dead branches, continue to fall down. I don't know if they have a copy of the letter that I sent to the selectmen that uh, a huge limb about 10 feet long came down recently, right parallel uh, in the sidewalk, obviously, where people uh, walk and uh, sometimes park. But we have a professional opinion that says this tree is not saveable? Yes. 
All right, have we got a motion? Yeah. Move to close the Scenic Road Act and Public Shade Tree public hearing and approve the removal of an approximately nine foot circumference Norway maple tree within the Country Way right of way in front of House 724 for the Town of Situate Public Grounds Department as the roots of the tree are creating a hazardous buckling situation with the sidewalk and public safety is a concern. Second. Can we also modify that and say that the tree is dying and is not stable? And the tree is on its way out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rapidly approaching the fireplace. Uh, yes. Yes. Second as amended. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike, take a look at the tree in front of Allen Auto. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's coming down. Is it? The light, is it? Yeah, I mean, it is coming down. Big branch fell off the other day. Okay. We're now, we're now only an hour and five minutes okay. behind. Okay. Glad to help you get back on track. Okay. Uh, let's see. Placement of permanent screening Severn Blanchard Farm and review of the stormwater projects. Okay, where are we? Hopefully we can finalize all of this. <laughs> yeah, as were you. <laughs> okay. So, tell yeah. us where things stand. Sure. Um, at the last meeting, I think I presented that the swale had been constructed across the back of Lot 7. We finally issued our statement, um, the sign-off that was required prior to occupancy as part of the permit with Blanchard Farms, that the grading um, was complete on the site, that it complied with the design. Um, we went out, we did an as-built plan. That plan is what you see up here, uh, it depicts the grading on the backs of um, lot 7, 8, 9, and 10, we looked at the swale kind of all the way along the back of Whittier Drive. Um, we ran some as-built cross-sections. Um, that got submitted. Merrill responded to that with their first letter, um, which I, I'm going to be very general here, said that the what was built didn't comply with the design plan. Um, after that, I spoke with Laura, I've spoken with Peter Palmieri, and we issued some follow-up calculations that, you know, what we submitted in the as-built is of much greater capacity than the design plan. Uh, the swale is deeper than what was originally designed. The swale is wider than what was originally designed. Um, it meets the intent of what was originally designed. Um, we feel that there's no, no potential here for water to run across that uh, lot line as it had in the past. Again, everything we've done really pinpointed to uh, a stockpile that blocked this swale naturally on lot 7. That has been removed. It's been regraded um, to mimic what, what was there prior to Blanchard Farms. Uh, to be actually better than what was there prior to Blanchard Farms. Um, well, I thought maybe we could hear from Peter while we're at it. Sure, I'm uh, Peter Palmieri from Merrill Engineers and Lincoln Squares. Um, we did review the calculations. Um, we do think that um, it has, as it stands now, based on the cross sections we were provided, it does have the capacity um, for the 100 year storm. We did recommend that um, due to the irregular shape, irregular cross sections, potential for vegetation to grow and so on, that um, that a, a, a small berm be built, actually, and by small I mean inches, maybe six inches, but in this area here, just to, to prevent um, any flow from heading across the property line by the stone wall. Um, there was, there is kind of a low area in here. Um, it, it, based on the calculations, it's not going to over top again, but with, with hydraulic calculations, even though you, you come up with flows and elevations to the tenth of a foot, there's a lot of assumptions in there. Um, one of the assumptions being that the, the swale is going to be maintained, which is probably the biggest one. But I think any drainage design needs a factor of safety, and that's what I'm suggesting is creating, um, again, a berm in this area here, may actually carry down into here, so that you have a minimum depth, depth of one foot. 
Um, and, uh, and I think that um, the problem area is right basically in this area uh, be to the rear of a lot eight. As you get down into lot seven, it's somewhat more well defined. Um, I do think uh, it's hindsight, but it, a drainage easement would have been a good approach. Um, it's probably too late in the process now to get that um, because there is a possibility that the swale, something's going to happen to the swale. Homeowners do crazy things. Uh, they do things they think is right, but not necessarily in the intent. But um, I think we do need to create um, somewhat of a berm there. And we met with Greg out in the field, and I, I thought we had agreed. Uh, my understanding was we, we agreed to do that, um, and we um, would see a plan submitted to the board with uh, a plan view as well as a cross section of what that eventual swale would look like. Okay, great. And is that the case? Partially, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we did meet in the field. We did talk about constructing that berm. I do want to remind the board, we had this same exact discussion about a berm in that exact location uh, in April of 2016. I came up with a design plan. This was submitted to the board. The applicant on lot eight was required to hire Amory engineers to review this. Amory engineers back in April of 2016 reviewed this and approved this, and this is what was constructed. And it was designed as a six inch high berm. That exists today. There were pictures of that submitted to this board back then. I'll pass them around again. But you see there's a berm. Yep. It's, it's an earthen berm. If we looked at it the other day, um, it could be brought up. I think Peter's recommending that it be brought up to a foot in height. Um, again, what's out there contains the, contains the water as it's built right now in the 100-year storm event. It does provide freeboard. It does not provide as much freeboard as Merrill is proposing, but it's what Amory at that time had recommended. Um, I'm here really for lot seven. I've been hired by the property owners at lot seven. This berm is on lot eight. I do not know the property owner at lot eight at this point in time. I have not spoken with them about this. This is something that would need to go through the owners of lot eight if we were gonna be doing work on that lot. I can tell you that on lot seven, we have a foot of, a foot of depth in that swale all the way across lot seven. How did it do this past Friday night when it rained buckets, two inches of rain? How did everything work out? The, the abutters are in the audience. We didn't, we didn't have any water. We were fine. That's the case of Quinn's as well? We have no comment. You have no comment? Or you didn't see it? I, I didn't see it. It was nighttime. I didn't go out with a flashlight and inspect. The only comment I have is Mr. Morse indicated that uh, they've established a man-made swale, but according to the plans, the natural swale was 25 feet off the wall. So my question is, why is a man-made swale made five feet off the wall? Well, the, the, the primary question here is the stormwater system as it's designed today, is it going to contain and manage the stormwater on the site? And I'm not differentiating between lot 7 and lot 8. This whole thing is going from lot 10 all the way down to lot 6, right? And I'm still looking to the developer who designed this entire stormwater system to say that it will contain the 100-year storm from lot 10 all the way down. I guess that's my question. That has always been my question, and I'm, I was hoping we were going to get an answer to that tonight. I think referring to the Merrill letter of June 20th, 2017, um, it appears that they ran calculations for the 100-year storm event. The calculations showed a depth of flow of 0 0.41 feet. Um, it shows that the capacity is there with what's out there today. So you're comfortable, you're telling me that you've designed... I'm going to defer to the Merrill, but this was originally designed, I'm we submitted... You. Yes, I'm asking I'm, you first. 
Yes, we'll we submitted. Carol in a minute. <laughs> we said we submitted design calculations to this board. Yes. To design this thing here for the hundred-year storm event back in March of this year, um, we had designed it as a minimum swale of <coughs> two feet wide by eight inches deep. That's what the design plan was out here. When we went out with the contractor, we staked out the center line of that swale. We gave him the grades of it, and we said make sure water doesn't go across that lot line build it higher on the side build it wider build it bigger this is the minimum design that minimum design based on our calculations was for the hundred year storm event what got built was bigger than our design that's why i believe it contains the hundred year storm event from one end to the other yes i'm not talking to the about other. lot seven swale okay i'm talking about the whole thing from one end to the other correct right. Because as, as I understand it, both of you have concurred that there's a swale that starts somewhere around lot eight. But upstream Correct. of that, it's not a swale. It's something else, right? It's I'm natural, not sure what natural it is. topography. It's, right. uh, it's not a defined channel on the backs of lots 10 or 9 or the top part of lot eight, but it's the that topography here in general. Area is contained on the it, it doesn't flow off into Whittier. No. So it flows downstream, flows, flows through to the, the north. channel, all the way to the to the um, level the spreader or whatever you call it. The drainage part six. Right. Correct. And Peter, are you comfortable with that as well? Um, yes. The, again, I, um, my only hesitation is that. The, the cross sections, and this is why again I go back to the free board. It's obviously the board's dis, um, decision, and the calculations here work, and we we viewed this as the worst um, of the cross sections. My only concern is that I think there's a lower area here, um, and that's why if you area. I'm sorry a flat area a flatter area it yeah. it it's difficult to explain but it's flatter it, it doesn't have the relief and there's a lot of vegetation where I mean I'm not sure what the what the elevations are and again that was the only the suggestion I had and I understand that apparently there's no control right now on lot 8 with uh, as far as Greg is concerned but um, is that if you if you mount it up you're gonna you're not gonna allow the possibility that there's gonna be a low area in there um, you, you can't take cross sections hundred percent of the lot so mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm suggesting a little bit of free board or a little bit of factor safety in there but you're comfortable on light 10 and line yes. 9 that it's feeding down and not across to the lots correct to the without question route. yes okay okay and um, there was uh, well, I sent a couple of notes back. I don't know if you forwarded those or not, Laura, but... With the questions? Yeah. Yeah, I did, and you okay. got answers back. You saw that? If I did, I haven't seen them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think they've right seen here. each other's answers, mm -hmm. and... Um, yeah, yeah. And I think the Quins have seen those also. Yeah. And the rest no, of I the kind others. of tried to reconcile all three of these reports into these three questions, basically, right? One is... Does it contain the hundred-year storm from end to end, right? And what I'm hearing is both of our experts think that's the case, right? Um, there was some discrepancy in some of your calculations on what the minimum velocity was. I don't know if you've reconciled that or not. No, I mean I. I think, I, I think Peter suggested it was 13.8 and you, yeah, the, you suggested it was 27. Um, I think I think it's the 13.8 or whatever the um, just because we ran we ran a, um, a computer analysis and um, one of the things that you have to take into consideration is the flow gets shallower the velocity drops mm -hmm. so as the velocity drops the capacity of the channel goes down right um, and so you can't take a cross section somewhere, take figure out the velocity there, and then carry it all the way up. Right. So, um, so what we took what we thought was the worst case cross section. But again, the, and the, still the capacity is still capacity there. To yes. Storm. Correct. Okay. May I add to that? Yes. 
Okay. We, we also provided uh, a hydrocat analysis of the as-built conditions on uh, lots 7, 8, 9, and 10. That as-built hydrocat in the 100-year storm event yielded 8.79 cubic feet per second going, being directed toward that swale. Mm -hmm. based, on, based on Peter's calculation, that swale has capacity of 13.8 CFS at that smallest choke point, if you will. Right. So we have So you have the capacity. Should have some free board there, too. Yes. That's about two tenths of a foot. Well, that, that, I mean, <laughs> I like to be safe, so that's why I was just, yeah. I thought it should be a little deeper. Okay. But it is the 100 year storm, I mean. No, but that's the design standards. Though. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, are there questions? Yes. Um, question I have is the, I have two questions. Um, the numbers that we just banted about here, could you explain to me from lot nine going to lot eight, going to lot seven, going to the retention pond, what the pitch of that swale is? Sure. I think Greg's done the numbers on that. Sure. Um, we analyzed kind of a couple of different sections. I mean, from one end to the other, it's just shy of 1%. I think we had 009 as a percentage. Um, we did look at some sections, you know, in between that we had um, 0.4 as a percentage. Can we you had point out point. the sections you're talking about? Sure. Okay. So from, from one end to the other, from from here to the start of that swell on lot eight. Yep. This was 0 0.009 was the as built. So slightly less than 1%. Slightly less than 1%. 0098 yep. from the beginning to the end. Uh, between sections A and B, there was a 0.44, so half of a, a percent, just shy of half a percent. Um, and then between B and C, we had 1.4% in that upper section. Mm -hmm. And the, the DEP design standard for this? DEP design standard is to design it essentially as flat as possible. But no more than? No more than 5%. 5 percent The maximum. There is no minimum. Mm -hmm. And do you have a sense for what the slope is upstream of that swale? I can I can scale it off. I mean, it's not a again, it's not a channelized flow yeah. above that. It's just surface topography. Um, the start of the swale here at elevation 60. We're going up 200 feet. We're at 61 and a half. So I mean, it's it's slightly shy of one percent. Okay. To answer your question. It does answer my question. Uh, I'm not an engineer, but the engineer I retained indicated that the ideal slope would be 2%, not 1%. Uh, well, I think I provided both of you with the Hodge report, right? So I'd be interested in your take on that and sort of reconciliation on that. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I could offer that um, I'm not sure there's any ideal um, for a swale, it depends on what you want the purpose of the swale is. I think the DEP, to make it as flat as possible, um, that's to promote infiltration and um, infiltration as far as improving water quality. Mm -hmm. um, you and can have a scour too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, at 2%, you're not going to get much scour unless yeah. it's uh, a fairly um, well defined channel. But you can go up to 5% because of um, grass. Mm -hmm. It offers quite a bit of resistance. so. Um, if you had it two foot deep with grass on the belt bottom, that would be great. Mm -hmm. If it was two inches deep with grass, you know, even you wouldn't scour very much. So I don't think there's any hard and fast rule um, as far as velocity. And, and I, think, I think the thing we're trying to look at is that the swale functions as designed and it doesn't cause any flooding to the abutting property. 
So if you can do that by elevation difference, geometry of the swale, depth of the swale, that's what you need to be looking at um, instead of, not instead of, but th that's the bottom line. So uh, that's and all. It sounds like we offer. have that bottom line at this point. Um, I do. I, again, I, I still think that we could use a little bit of. A little more depth. Yeah. A little more free board. Exactly. Okay. I, the thing I note about um, your engineer's report is it was done before this work has been completed now. So I would I would expect, I don't know if they're interested in reviewing it or not, but they would reach a similar conclusion. Because it seems like we've reached the same conclusion that we now have a system that will manage the 100 year storm on site. My understanding is that a lot of that flooding had to do with also that there was some stockpile as you went down the, the, um, the swale and it really created quite a ponding situation. The depth was um, more than it would be now. Um, I didn't see it, so I don't know, but. I would say that was a contributing factor. I, I think it may have been that we didn't have enough of a defined swale for this whole area either but it looks like we're, we're there at this point. Um, any other questions? Yeah. You know, my second question was, uh, it still remains unanswered. The original uh, natural swale was 25 feet off the stone wall, and the man-made swale is five feet off the stone wall. Now, Mr. Uh, the Merrill Engineering, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Peter. Mr. Palmieri just identified his concern about the upkeep mm -hmm. of the swale. Well, I believe the owners of Property 7 just installed plantings along the boundaries, and they are almost in the swale. So if the swale is five feet off the wall, and these plantings are growing, they're going to grow into the swale. So. My question was, why was a man-made swale made five feet off the wall when it was originally planned and identified as 25 feet off the wall? I don't, do you have a response to that, Greg? I, I did visit the site just before I came here tonight. I didn't get a chance to print it out, but I did see some of the plantings. I'll pass my phone, unless you have photos of this. Okay. Um, yeah, some of the plantings went in, they went in the, in the embankments of the swale, um, and the embankments are still intact. They did not go in the center line of the swale. Um, I don't see them impeding the flow in any way. Um, could it even potentially improve? It, it could with some of the water uptake, mm -hmm. with it being at such a flat slope. Um, yeah, I think you will get a little bit of uptake in it. But my question still remains, why was the uh, man-made swale made five feet off the wall in the no work zone? Right. I don't think we've heard an answer to that, but at least I think we've got an answer to whether we're managing the stormwater or not. Right. But and that's, I think that's our primary objective here, right? Well, our primary make objective sure is, is to make sure we don't run stormwater onto Whittier Drive properties. And I I think at this point we have that licked. So that's a question not to be answered? Well, uh, if Greg can answer that, I, I don't know if he can or not. Well, that was a, a, a boundary established when this board approved the definitive subdivision plan, and now that's changed. It doesn't sound like it's a boundary we're going to be able to reestablish, so I don't know the answer to that question, but the, the important part is that we're managing the stormwater on this, right? Uh, can Mr. Morris answer the question? Sure. Sure. Feel free to. Sure. The original subdivision did show a tree line or a, a limit of work, if you will, at the back of all of those lots. Um, that was on lots eight and nine. You know, that limit of work is approximately 20 feet out from the stone wall. Um, on lot seven, it was cleared right up to the stone wall. That's not what our original design showed. 
Our original design calculations, though, did show that all of the lots were going to be fully developed because in the future, we don't know what's going to happen on these lots. If people are going to cut trees down, if they're going to add additional lawn areas, that was taken into account in our original drainage calculations. We didn't propose that as a no disturb buffer or easement of any kind or any sort of restriction. It was always calculated in the calculations as being a developed single family lot for its entirety. So now that we are trying to reconcile this after the work's been done, after that buffer zone was cleared, uh, that's how it plays into the landscape. That's how it plays into the house location and what was constructed out there. That's the location that was shown on that design plan. How far off the lot is that house on lot 7? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. How far off the boundary line is the house on lot number 7? I have no idea. Do you have 31 any? feet. Do you know? It complies with the zoning bylaw. I know that, which has a 30-foot rear yard setback. It's in compliance. And let me ask you a question on this too. In terms of the going forward maintenance of that swale, who who takes on that responsibility and where is it captured? Sure. Um, that swale where it's constructed, uh, you know, it's going to be vegetated. On the back side of it is is landscape and trees, but the center line of that swale and everything on the house side is going to be proposed as lawn. Mm -hmm. um, so the homeowner will be in charge of maintaining the lawn surface and mowing the lawn surface. And does it show up on the homeowner's deed or is there any uh, sort of obligation to continue to maintain? No, there really shouldn't be any maintenance to it. It's not receiving roadway runoff or anything. It's not receiving any large sediment load. Uh, the only maintenance associated would again be cutting cutting the lawn at a fairly frequent basis, making sure that um, you no know, fill be placed into it or change in grade be put into it. Yeah, I guess the maintenance I was speaking of was not necessarily that, but to continue to maintain it as a swale so it doesn't get, doesn't become. Sure. So I mean, the yeah. town. So moving forward, the town does have the stormwater bylaw. So if there's any changes to the drainage system, a filing would be required through the stormwater bylaw. This is a documented drainage path at this point. Okay. Um, any other comments? Questions from the board? No. Yeah, one there. Come from. Oh yes. Hi, owner of lot seven. What is this? Um, Could you identify? Sorry, your Patrick Hunter, uh, lot seven here. What is this uh, stormwater um, bylaw that uh, Greg just mentioned? What, what is that all about? The town has a stormwater bylaw that manages the that that requires the management of stormwater on lots, okay, so individual that, lots. What does that mean? I guess if this swale isn't maintained or something happens. Well, this it? this was a subdivision. This was a subdivision that was permitted through our regulations, and part of that subdivision requires the management of stormwater from the new development such that it doesn't increase stormwater flow to adjoining properties. So the design of it was designed to capture that stormwater and put it to the drainage parcel, which is lot five or six. It's actually a drainage parcel. Drainage parcel is next to lot six, right? Yeah. So those are those are ongoing requirements of the subdivision going forward. There are also all, all kinds of other drainage in the in the street and and uh, individual houses have drainage requirements for their downspouts, et cetera. Fair. Um, I guess. Well, I guess my main question is, um, who would then raise any issue with the stormwater? Probably if you blocked it off, your neighbor. So this could be ongoing type of perpetuity there? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we've had it in the past um, where stormwater systems like this, somebody's inadvertently, mm -hmm. I don't think maliciously, but inadvertently decided to create a level area or something and blocked off a swale. But the problem is the swale's design 
to move the water from all these lots to the drainage parcel. Mm -hmm. Isn't it within the homeowners association though? This soil here is on private property, so it's not. The remainder of the drainage system, the basin, the roadway drainage, that's all in the homeowners association, yes. Mm -hmm. And that may be something we want to try to figure out how to address in the future. And right. I think Peter's recommendation of a drainage easement was probably what we should have set up here. Right. In hindsight. Okay. Um, no other questions. Do we have a motion? Uh, we have one other motion. Motion for what? Um, I I, I had one. I I didn't um, seem to have brought it down here, but it had to do with a whole other approach this to this. So. I think if you want a motion at this point, this has gone in some different directions than where I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. So, do we just want to move to accept? Yeah, well, I, I, I guess I'm satisfied that we've got a permanent solution here. Um, if you know, I guess I'd like to hear the board whether you guys think differently. I mean, I do think we we might want to take Peter's suggestion to add the absolutely the free board right. Or add the depth, if you will. But that would have to be part of a, <clears throat> a decision, or I think it would have to be part of a vote. Right? Yeah. yeah. But but the other part of all of this, our discussion, was the replacement of permanent screening. The screening. Yeah, that's a separate issue. That's a se whole separate. Okay. Um, or at least I assume it would be. The, the motion that I had had to do with. Differently. I mean, I do think we we might want to take. Peter's suggestion to add the absolutely the free board right or add the depth if you will but that would have to be part of a <clears throat> a decision or I think it would have to be part of a vote right? yeah. yeah but but the other part of all of this our discussion was the replacement of permanent screening the screening yeah that's a separate issue that's a se whole separate okay um, or at least I assume the, it would be the, the motion that I had had to do with doing something you know as far as the swale and it would also clean up some of the stockpiled soil that's back towards the back of lot eight um you know there's a pile of stony soil that's just sitting under some trees it's probably not doing the trees any good mm -hmm. and it's almost an eyesore so that could be taken you know rocks cleaned out of it and made into this berm, which might be like a, a landscape feature around those trees that are still there. I, I thought that's what we had all agreed on, or is that different? That's, we, we did discuss that in the field, and I think that berm is easily done. I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's redundant. I, I'm not going to disagree with Peter's recommendations on it, but uh, it is located entirely on lot 8. I just have one question. You mentioned when I spoke to you this week about the curve around that bank of trees between lot eight and seven, that they were going, to, or that they both had concurred that they were going to construct a wider curve that would go further in, as you put it, to lot seven. And that's when I asked you if there was any plans drawn up, and you said, not as, as of yet, but I believe that's what the board is waiting for, the plan. So, now tonight we're not sure what work is going to get done where you know no no i think things aren't quite that you know ungelled i think they're a lot more gelled than that and the motion was going to be to get this plan now the only obstacle right now is that we don't seem to have a connection with the owner of lot eight and um whether or not you know this goes to him or it goes back before him and i would also want to say um obviously obviously to me the owners of lot seven and eight would have to be involved in exactly where this swale goes understand where it is w what it's for and if there's some ground cover that they want to see on it you know that would be you know something something to talk about but it seems to me like this is all part of the the basic design of the subdivision and that 
you know, maybe there were some circumstances that couldn't have been foreseen, like the stormwater going off towards Whittier Drive, but it's really all part of the subdivision, and I would, I would go back to the developer and I think it's you know, look to them. Yep, yeah, I agree. I, I think that's exactly where mm -hmm. we should go. The developer has no rights on Lot 8. It's been conveyed out. This board has reviewed an as-built plan and hired an engineer to review it of their own choosing who recommended it be released. The covenants have been released. It's been conveyed at huh. this point. So you need to talk to the property owner on Lot 8. You know, there is a bond. Well, well, there is a bond for the remaining the property road property owner anyway. But yeah. I mean, in terms of the funding, I'm not sure the property owners should have to pay for the design and for actual construction of this thing. Anyway, I think I have to run back to the office and find this. Office. Okay. <laughs> um, is there any, any other any other information that we need to hear at this point? Do we have we seen a sort of a uh, uh, or have you worked out a solution on the planting and screening plan? Has that happened? Um, we had a meeting last week, Laura, mm -hmm. ourselves, Jackie, and the Hunters, and they put the, t the trees, I think the trees look great. They are. They're tall. They're wide. Good. Looks like Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Good. Get the lights out. <laughs> Wait till they see us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just a clarification, this was originally it was just grass, right? It was the high grass. So they put the trees no, behind this it? Is, this is this, this is, is lot on the lot seven. Lot seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, one yeah. Seven, not that. I think this is the um, Oh the dri I'm driveway. I'm the driveway right. one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just but they had a lot of screening, they had to plan along the property line. Right? Okay. Okay. Well let's give Laura a minute. Do we want to? How about this form A? Um, is somebody for the form A here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there he is. He's sitting right there. <laughs> uh, you're the Alpha Omega of our, our yeah, evening yeah. here. I just forgot to put here. I move. All right. To find that. I move to find that a natural swale at the back of lot seven and eight was eliminated with the development of eight Blanchard Farm estates. And when there is heavy rain, st rain, stormwater has flowed onto adjacent properties. The proposed mitigation consisted of a shallow swale connected to the level spreader north of the detention basin. The town's consulting engineer believes the swale should be deeper with the berm constructed on one side. The planning board agrees with this approach and requires that this will be shown on the plan to be submitted to the consulting engineer for his approval. At that point, it shall be constructed by the contractor. This work shall be completed within three weeks, or the planning board may pursue the issuance of fines in accordance with the town of situate non-criminal disposition bylaw. And that, just for clarification, that's on the back of eight, right? What you said? Seven. 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 Seven and eight. Sevens were all the new plantings just went in. Right. Right. And we have more than a foot on a, the back of lot seven all the way across based on the asphalt. So you think it can just be on eight? Yeah. I mean, is that? I thought we were talking about freeboard at the top at lot eight. Okay. But. Isn't that what we said? I, yeah, I, we I said think it's seven be. and eight. Uh, well, we said that the natural swale had been eliminated at seven and eight, right? And now it's been reconstructed. Yeah. Now this is the area I was talking about. I thought we would be right, right there. Right. The back of lot eight. Lot eight. Lot eight. Yes. Lot eight. Okay. Okay. Um, so take so out we seven. So we can take out any reference to lot seven and just make it lot eight. And you guys are lot seven. And I know how difficult this is for you. A new homeowner, you're in a new place, and boy, you've been inundated with more than just rain. So hang in there and just don't pile your lawn clippings in the swale. 
and don't feel this way either. Right. <laughs> well, seriously. Right. And somebody else I know in another subdivision. Clean it. Right. Clean it. Um, planted a garden in theirs. I mean, come on. <laughs> but welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. It's appreciated, really. We all have to go along to get along. you have any changes, Bill? No, I mean... Do, do we think three weeks is the right time, or should it be, you know, realistically, maybe it should be longer than that? I think this has gone on long enough. We need okay. to get things planted. We need to get it right? done. We need to get it vegetated, too, right? Well, the vegetation is in. It is there. Yeah. But, but actually, but yeah, in, in, in the swale and yeah. up on, you know, people's lawns. Mm -hmm. any, any other discussion? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I hear a motion to move as amended? As amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Laura, when you when you left, we were just talking about the screening. Okay. Do you have any other sort of input or update on where we are? Um, yeah, I uh, got an email from the owners of Lot 8. And I don't remember if I shared that with everybody, but they'd be okay with a fence back, a couple of feet back. That seemed to be what they preferred. A fence at the, at the parking pad. Yeah. Well, on the other side of the... Behind the grasses. Right. So the grasses would be in front of the fence and then the fence. Right. And, that and the fence would block the headlights. That wouldn't go into the drainage field, the septic? No, it would be way, way up. Okay. Um, Can I just make a comment, though? Where that screening is, along that driveway, where they, you know, go into the side, their driveway comes off of Blanchard Farms um, further out. So when they do come in, that screening only helps for once the car is in sideways and facing their garage. It's when they come in the way that driveway is constructed. They come in way off of Blanchard Farm and it swings in and that's where all those lights swing around. So just by providing those upper varieties or those uh, grasses really didn't help with lighting because by, at that point they're already turning straight into their garage. It's, it's primarily maybe blocking cars when they're parked there but now there's really no screening. So if you could go out, if you could look at the extent to which that driveway where those cars all come in it all the time. Um, that, that's my com one comment. Do you understand well, what I'm saying? No. <laughs> you have to be on site to see it, but. Well, just well, explain it to me. Actually, you know, on the, the, the plan right here. here so. There's no driveway on that, on that so plan. Just, oh. Okay. But as the car like. comes around the the cul-de-sac, okay. So this is there's the driveway. Mm -hmm. People come in. And they they're they're starting to pull it. They come in and pull in here. So the actually, lights are shining right at our. They house. have our they had our providers right here, but. This was, by this point, they're already turned going into their garage. So it, it's, it's primarily, I'm, I'm just saying, if they were to extend it out a little further right here. What's the proposal for the fence? Do they have a, a width or, or a length? They don't have a proposal. Um, I mean, but it's you going here? You telling them what they need to do. But it's going here? Is that That's where I assumed it would go. So if they brought it out far enough? I'm not even. I'm not sure the driveway is really as wide yeah. as is shown on that plan. Yeah, I think it's narrower than that. Mm -hmm. But there was never anything going down the driveway. It was always just at the end of the driveway. That's the way this was discussed. And I think maybe there's, you know, a point where everyone has really done what's reasonable for everyone to do. But is there so there is a plan for what they're going to do? There, there isn't a plan. There are grass. There were arborvitae there. There mm -hmm. are grasses there now, and the plan that um, you know, you know, doesn't want to have anything to do with paying for it, which is another whole issue. But um, the plan that the property owner had was to use some fence that um, I think there's some other fence maybe between your property and the one just before it coming mm -hmm. down Whittier. 
there's like a, some kind of a white fence, like a white vinyl fence. Well, anyway, there's a fence like that that's visible from that driveway, and he was willing to use that same fence at the end of um, that part of the driveway. When you say use the fence, do you mean like, like look the same Install visual? Install a piece of fence that would go across the bottom of the driveway okay. so that headlights would be blocked. It's going to be downhill a foot or two from the driveway because it slopes off pretty right. quickly. Right. So, you know, it'd have to be, I was saying, four feet above the grade of the driveway. Mm -hmm. To block lights. To block lights right. well. The fence would have to be. Mm -hmm. so, it, so the idea is that they would put it in here somewhere. Um, and it would be at the end of the driveway. The that's the garage. Oh, I'm sorry, right. I'm in here. Yeah, yeah. I'm in here. So you right. can see how it drops. That's quite a slope. Yeah, but if it's high enough, it's high enough, right? I, I, so. Yeah, I think it would go like across the so. whole width of you know that angle on the uh -huh. driveway. Well, I think that's where you'd have to have it. Mm -hmm. To start at the corner and go far enough out so when a car comes in, we're not on these lights shining in the back of our house. On. No, here. This, I mean, to me, that's just a design thing, right? Somebody should be able to figure that out, right? But then well, that's, I mean, no one's really gotten it. I mean, I think when you start having someone there, like, designing it, that's another whole, that's another whole step we haven't really thought about. I mean, he already has said he will not pay for this and that, you know, someone else is going to have to pay for it. Um, he is the one who cut down the trees. I don't know, you mm -hmm. know, who else really should pay for it. Mm -hmm. Well, the other option is put the trees back up. Well, wasn't yeah, that a condition the, the accessory lot? This wasn't. No, no this is not the accessory lot. Oh, okay. yeah. When they decided then they to put the driveway out. without permission, there wasn't any uh, notice. Uh, but that was a requirement of the. That was something that we, that you all worked out with the, the builder, yeah, that they would really put those um, arbor vitae up because he had um, gotten a building permit that based a, on a plan that was, that was a different. written decision somewhere? No, it wasn't, it wasn't a written decision. It's on a, pl it's on several plans. It's on several as-built plans mm -hmm. that you all, um, that you all required and I think those plans were used with the building permit. So when he got the bill, you know, when they got the building permit, no, it would have been afterwards. Well, yeah, uh, not quite sure when, but um, I did get an opinion from town council that where that plan is an official as-built plan that the planning board has discussed and used and reviewed and so on, that there is some basis to ask that you know, something be restored there where those arbor vitae were on that plan. Well, it's either arbor vitae or a fence, right? Or you yeah. can use green giant. Um, yeah, sort I of mean, it doesn't have to be arbor vitae yeah. as long as it's. And those a are wide and they're tall. Yeah, I, I kind of got that he didn't really like the look of the arbor vitae. I don't blame for that. No, yeah. they're pretty ugly. Or they could have extended Good, this grading out fence? so there was flatness along know. the sides, and they have a retaining wall. He had, his concern was he can't push snow over, you know, and so the fence had to be pushed back. But if you flatten that slope out a little bit further and have a little retaining wall, then you can put arbor vitae further out from him on his driveway. That would be a help. Well, that would make the rest of the slope even steeper, though. That's, yeah, and then you're changing the calculus. The drainage. And then you're getting drainage and more water. And I mean, yeah, it I just the, opens the a whole can of worms. Let's, let's figure out if we can get the screening in place with what we got. That's how. That's, that's the challenge. And I would go back. I would go back to the homeowner and say, you know, we got two options, right? One is to replant those that left with something you like, but that provides screening. Brasses don't. You have. You have a motion. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what am I doing here? I move that the planning board finds that the orientation of the driveway on lot 8 allows headlight glare to spill onto the property at 30 Whittier Drive, where it is an annoyance to the neighbors. 
This was discussed in depth at the planning board meetings on 5-4-2017 and at other times, and was proposed to be mitigated by a requirement for Arborvitae. These Arborvitae were shown on multiple as-built plans with the issuance of occupancy permits and for review of grading. The Arborvitae were removed without notice to the town or the neighbors. I move to find that the Arborvitae were necessary mitigation required by the town and that the owner of Lot 8 is responsible for either replacing them or substituting a solid fence of a minimum of four feet above the elevation of the driveway turnaround across the width of the turnaround. This work shall be completed within three weeks or the planning board may pursue the issuance of fines in accordance with the town of Situate non-criminal disposition bylaw. Is three the, only, weeks? the only modificate, well there's two things, three weeks is probably not. Enough time I mean, I actually just ordered a fence or we yeah. did a trellis and I mean it takes way longer than three weeks. Uh, do you want to change it to six? Yeah, go to six. Six weeks. The other thing I would say is that they don't have to go back with our providey, but they could propose a, a different kind of screening. Right. right. It can't be ornamental grasses. It can't be yeah, deciduous, you know, it can't it be deciduous that goes away. It has time. to be evergreen. Right. But they could just come and propose that as right. a, all right. I'm not lined up like sentence. <laughs> okay. Can you add that it shall extend beyond the driveway to block when they're turning in? Yeah, if you guys could just well, what, did, look. what did you say there? What? what it it doesn't say, say that because that was never part never of it. Never part of it, ever. Is it it the that's to screen lights, and that it never screened lights ever. Even when our varieties were up there, it never screened lights. That's what you people all decided without any of us. We didn't want that. We didn't have a say in this. We didn't have a say. So we, we, we never, even when they grow to full height, they were never going to screen lights. It, it wasn't far enough out, is what we're saying. And so I just think if you took a look at it on site to see what we see every day, it would help you. That's all. What is? What did we say? Um, uh, About that lights. Let me just. Look at it. Would you like me to draft something and, pr and no. submit no. it? No. All right. We could say um, a solid fence of a minimum of four feet above the elevation of the driveway. And we can just modify this yeah. to say to block light, block a nuisance light Probably. onto 30 Whittier Drive, right? And that leaves it as they've got to do what they've got to do. Because what right? <clears throat> the width of the turnaround is the that's well, I wouldn't like even call a, it the turnaround, the whole drive back of the driveway, of the driveway. Yeah. yeah, like if they extended it maybe two feet. Or even four feet, but it's the, the it never it never it never was going to screen headlights ever at the at the point where he planted them. It screened a car. It would screen a car. You'd still see the car, but their car would be parallel with the bushes after he his lights have turned and faced us, and then he goes in. But at that point, his lights are on his garage door. I'm just saying when they come in from Blanchard Farm, that's the main. He has to travel in a little, you know, a little ways like this, facing right at us, right at our living room, right. until he starts to turn into his garage. We're, then the bushes are there, but that point in which he turns in is further out than that arborvitaes ever went. So, if you extended the arborvitaes or a fence, it would help when he first comes in with those headlights. So why don't we just add and you know that it will. The solid fence of a minimum four feet above the elevation of the driveway turnaround across the width of the turnaround and such additional width to fully screen the headlights to 30 Whittier Drive. I think they've got it. How about that? All second is modified. That seems reasonable. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
Motion collector. <laughs> All right. And, and Laura, you'll notify uh, the homeowners on it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What do we got left? For May. Well, that's why Greg's still hanging around. I was like, yeah, just look around. Show up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Quick overview. Yep. Uh, this is a Form A plan located at 147 and 149 Thomas Clapp Road. Um, you'll see the building on the front. Lot one is number 147. It's an existing 46,000 square foot lot. We're proposing to cut 5,340 square feet out of the back, located as parcel A, and combine it with lot two which is a building 149 clap road out back um, both lots are left with uh, required area this is in the r1 zoning district lot one is left with 40,678 lot two um, has 92,900 lot two was created as a 50-foot frontage lot there's a special permit in place so we're only adding area to it lot one is fully compliant with frontage on clap road and compliant with the lot so area. lot two couldn't be sort of split in two houses go back and no as part of the special permit uh, okay. it's required that it can't be further divided so okay. and what was the purpose of this just to kind of like straighten up the lot lines or the lot lines here were were a little funky when you went out there on the ground uh, lot two was actually maintaining parcel a as part of their front lawn we staked it out and everyone realized where the line was <laughs> and they were able to work an agreement and convey so yeah. So life is good, and no. They're going to own their they, front lawn now. Couldn't just right. take it this adverse <laughs> possession. <laughs> no. All right. Do we have a motion? Oh my goodness, it's getting late. I move to endorse as approval not required a plan of land in situate mass showing a division of parcel 24-2-29 and 24-2-29A, 147 and 149 Thomas Clapp Road by Morse Engineering Company, Inc., dated 6-15-17, as the division of the tract of land shown on the accompanying plan is not a subdivision because it shows a proposed conveyance or change in lot line which does not alter the existing frontage as required under the situate zoning bylaw. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye, Aye. 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 Hi, Greg. Good night. <laughs> okay. Now you can go. Like Anything we absolutely need to do here? One bill? Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, it's over here on the other side. Thank you. Um, oh. Move to pay three hundred ninety dollars to Merrill Corporation, Lot One, Otis Place Construction Inspections. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Do we all have to sign this? Three. Oh, you did? No, no, I mean the bill. Oh, no, just you. Oh, just me. Just you. Okay. Um, can we dispense with minutes? We don't have any We don't have any minutes? Yes. Okay. Anything else at this no. point? I'll entertain <laughs> Bill's motion. Thank All you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.